Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Here we are. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Savage Saturdays here on the Drinking Bros podcast. We're on episode 17. 17 weeks it's awesome. of consistently doing one thing. No. That's an accomplishment. Huge for us. Huge accomplishment. Uh, I'm your host, Derek Wyda. Joining me, as always. It's Owen. It's Owen. How's it's going? Owen. And actually, today, we're going to find out... Who the fuck is Owen? Who is this guy? I thought today would be the right time. Like we've yeah. marinated, like you know. So we've you've been on every every episode with yeah. me, and uh, nobody knows who the fuck you are. And you nope. have a really interesting life tale. You're old, <laughs> and you've been some places and done some yeah. things. It's it's very interesting. Um, before we get into that, before we get into you, it's not always all about you. It's not. Owen. It's never. Um, we're gonna we're gonna do something new. I okay. mentioned it last week. Um, we always do the savage slapper. Yeah, and we get we get we get slappy. But as uh, today we're recording, um, it's a Sunday. It is Sundays. I sometimes get sappy. They do, and I want to do the savage sapper. I was wondering because I heard sappy music when I walked in. Yeah, well, that, that was just dude. That this is actually music that I listen to and that I love and enjoy. And so I'm not always. Um, I, I bang metal a lot, yep. but I listen to when I say sappy, I'm just talking about, you know softer music it's maybe right. not like love sappy or something like that but we're just going to categorize categorize it all as sappy just to uh uh feel the vibe so what do you got the vibe uh it's an it's an interesting band i don't know i mean um it's not well known it's a band called mew okay the band is mew i, I don't know much about them i found them like 10 years ago how um my buddy he, he's i have a one of my good friends back home I, I i don't stay in touch with him he's one of my friends that um in high school, this is who I ditched school with and smoked oh, yeah. with. And then when I got yeah. when I got medically retired from the army, like he's a good dude and I'm a good dude. We bring out the worst oh. in each other because we'll just like drink and fuck around and stuff like that. But anyways, he's a he's always been a really uh, uh, good musician and he has interesting music taste, okay. you know. And he finds like weird off the wall yeah. shit. And he showed me this song by Mew called "Introducing Palace Players." Okay, it's a fucking good song. It's just it's weird. Yep. The timing of the music is weird, and so it makes it it just makes it cool and interesting. Yep. But but the uh, the Savage Sapper today is a song called "Comforting Sounds" by right. Mew. Dude, it's fucking good. Dude. Sounds like meditation music. It, it almost is, and it, and it has like it has like a like a a build and like a climactic point in the song where they just fucking open it up, mm -hmm. and you just want to put your hand up and. Do like that thing and feel the know? Holy yeah, Ghost, feeling the vibes, man. <laughs> just feeling the vibes. So, so comforting sounds by Mew is the Savage Sapper. Okay, today. Um, but this uh, the song that you were hearing me play. I probably yeah. played it what like five times since yep. you've been here. Yeah, that's what it's I been do. On you know? repeat. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> it's it's a song called um, uh, the Zookeeper's Boy. And but do that that intro is like bear now now bear now bear now 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 yeah now. it's uh like their timing yep is just um it's it's really cool music so um I'm a Spotify user yeah um actually comforting sounds is is their most played song and so like they're not I mean it it has seven million plays I've resisted but, Spotify. because I've been I've put so much work into my Pandora stations that I get like the right music that comes across oh. but. I need more control for I, nine. I downloaded it and I'm I'm trying out. Once you you're like, wait, I just have access to fucking everything, everything? on command yeah. ever, and you can create your own playlist. I haven't adjusted it's, to it's their nine ninety nine a month for the premium. Yeah, and uh, you just get everything. It's yep. fucking awesome. I, I was a late adopter too, because I was I was loyal to Apple Music, and I thought that um you know I was um. Thinking of it from the artist's standpoint, like how do they make the most money? Right. It seems like buying their album would bring right. them the most That's money. That's what I would think. But, um, and they, I, I don't think Spotify pays too well, but you know what? It's probably a couple cents per I started, play type I started, of thing. I started thinking about me a little more. And if I really, if I really, really love an album, yep. I do buy it on iTunes yep. because it's it's louder. Right. And you can, you can change the loudness on Spotify. There's an equalizer okay. and you can just blow it the fuck up. But... You just, it's not as balanced, you know, it's not as, it doesn't sound as, as perfect. You can get rid of that little bit of hearing you have left. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fuck it. So that's the, that's the <laughs> sapper. I love this shit. Mew comforting sounds, but also check out the zookeepers boy. 
introducing palace players. It's fucking and and, and like the guys. Uh, just fair warning: the guy's voice is very falsetto. Okay, you know it's it's, it's a high pitched yeah. voice, but it's like calm and soothing. This this song, comforting sounds. It's it's awesome. I'm gonna yeah. check it out because I just recently started doing this where I started listening to down tempo music when I run instead of like I used to when I worked out listen to stuff to get me all fired up. Yeah, for, no, but then you fight for, so for running, the trick is to find music that yeah. keeps you on pace. I never did your, this before. Your heart, your heart, your heart rate yeah. should go to the beat. Like I'm trying yeah. to lower this shit. So I'm yeah. listening to like down tempo kind of mm-hmm. like, I don't know, club vibe, just like chill shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, then, dude, that's why I listen to, um, electronic music when i do crossfit yeah like like uh but it has to be like the right kind of it, it's not super aggressive yep um but it's got that right uncoordinated electronic music but you know like i like tr- like trap and bass yeah. type shit yep where because like metal it just it, yeah it makes you too aggressive and aggression in high intensity workouts is right. not your friend because the workout is aggressive and your task is to stay calm. Right. <laughs> you know, and, and pace yourself, yeah, but it can't it's... be like Celine Dion calm, <laughs> you know, it's gotta be some kind of hype, right? The training montage song from Rocky four is the oh, perfect yeah. running song. Yeah. I swear to fuck. It is just the perfect running song. And then dude, like tricks with music is if, um, um, uh, songs that kind of like have rises and falls. Mm-hmm. You fucking go at a comfortable pace in the falls and then you just go balls to the wall yeah. during the hard part. And then you find, yeah, dude, play with music. Yeah. And then if you can get those, um, this, that's something I learned with running 15 years ago. Yeah. is like find, find a song or a type of a genre of music that goes with your pace. Right. You know, it's like, Hey, this is my eight minute mile playlist. This yeah. is my 10 minute mile playlist. Here's my six minute mile playlist. I don't, I never <laughs> controlled it that much. I had the, like, this just makes me want to keep going. Like I was going for the, the, the drive aspect of it, but now I'm starting to kind of fine tune that shit and be like, okay, yeah, lower, lower the heart rate as much as I can keep the pace with, with what I'm trying to yeah. accomplish. It's no, cool. It's cool when you, um, when it all starts coming together like that, yeah. you know, and like people are like, People like, I don't like running. I was like, well, you never, it's, it's a super enjoyable, like it's outdoors. It's physical activity. Yeah. It will literally make you happier. Right. You just, you know, <laughs> yeah. th- 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 there's, there's something else. <laughs> like, yeah, no, that's cool. Yeah. So that's, that's our, that's our sapper today. I'm itchy. I worked out today on a Sunday. I, uh, I just needed to move a little bit. I had a nice casual, um, <laughs> wad. It wasn't, I mean, it was like a. <laughs> It, yeah, it was super, it super was, casual. It was like 27 minutes of nonstop motion, but right. it felt good. I went at an easy pace, you know? Um, yeah. But, um, so that's the sapper today. Comforting sounds by Mew. Um, check them out. Yeah. Let's get to know Owen. So I'll tell you guys, here's how, here's how I met Owen. We're going to start here yeah. and we're going to fucking This is a funny story. And then we're going to come to uh present day. So I okay. was, um, I was, uh, what year was it? It was last year. It was 20, last year. 2019. Yeah. We're, almost like, maybe, exactly. Maybe year. March. Yeah. March or so. I uh was was I was busy with the twins, you yep. know, and I wasn't uh, my business life had kind of taken a backseat for almost two and a half years. Right. And I was OK with that. Like when I, you know, when I started doing Internet things in in 2014, I was like that shit controlled most of my life. I can imagine, you know, and then in 2016, when I met Stacy, she kind of I wasn't doing all right. Or like. I was doing good things, man. I'm not going to sit here and like shit on myself and right. act like I was doing horrible things. I was, I was doing good things, but I just wasn't good mentally. You know, I was kind of, or I just, I, I was having trouble. Mm-hmm. And I, the thing was, I was disconnected from my own life. Right. And Stacy meeting Stacy, she kind of like reeled me in and made me remember what's actually important in life. And so for, from, from that time, like I stayed active and did my thing, but um, I was definitely, you know, um, coming back down to earth a okay. bit and caring about myself and right. wanting the wanting wanting more fulfillment in my life because yeah. when I, when I say I wasn't doing well mentally, I put a lot of pressure on myself to help everyone all the time everywhere yeah. as much as I could. Right, and so I was doing all these things um, for other people, and I was I was I was profiting profiting, mm-hmm. you know. But I was just like, 
I was never focusing on me. Right. And my happiness. Right. And now it's like meeting Stacy. Now it's like I focus on my happiness, but I focus on her happiness and my kids' happiness and all of our future. It's very grounding. Yeah. yeah. And it's just like, okay, this feels good. This feels right. So business, you know, but you know, we did I did it um somewhat. You know, make making ends meet. Which you know? is mostly like shirts and yeah, well, you know, training shirts, other people or shirts almost died. No, really, you know, really for it was mostly like a couple shirt sales here and there, some art, art sometimes. That's right. That was the other one. Um, and then, uh, you know, first form has been, uh, yep. And, and, and so for about two years, I had no, nobody on my payroll. Right. So I was just keeping all that money. That was enough, you know, yep. and, and Stacy was working. And, um, so we had, um, a, a fair enough family income, you know, it was a, com- it was comfortable and right. had a lot of time. And I was training and, 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 um, things like that. And then, so, so I was just at the gym, I was at LVAC and I was taking my morning poop. Yep. And, uh, oddly enough, so this is the drinking bros podcast. Yeah. Drinking bros has fucking 50 different kinds of Facebook groups. Yeah. And one of them is drinking bros business yep. where people talk business, you yep. know? Um, and I was taking a poop at the gym and it just, it was fucking luck on what's on, on the top of my Facebook. Right. Feed. What's in the Cause feed. like up top. I didn't even look at your name. I yeah. just, here's what I read. It was like, Hey, I just moved. I recently moved to Las Vegas. I'm looking to basically learn how to shoot video and edit video, yep. but I need, um, test subjects. Cause I'm getting tired of filming my kids. Yep. And I, um, this is literally all I had been filming up to that point. Yeah. Uh huh. And, uh, I didn't know who you were. Didn't care. And I was just, you know, I was on pre-workout and I was feeling good that day. I was feeling uh, almost is almost generous, yeah. you know? And I was just like, I was like, Hey man, I live here. You know, I like doing stuff. We could, right. we could maybe do something fun. Yep. It w- and we started chatting and it was just supposed to be casual. And then, you know, i maybe like one or two days from when we started working with each other, we were like, Oh, we could, we could really turn this. And like the last thing I wanted was to turn it into a business relationship right. at the time, but it sort of became that. And, um, it's been good. I think, I think it's been good. I think it's right? been good. Yeah. But that's how we met. I was taking yeah. a poop. Owen <laughs> was just looking for somebody to, uh, to, to shoot video of so that you could learn. Cause you didn't, so you're my videographer Yeah, and you started I started with me with almost no, with almost none, none. Yeah. I literally, it's like YouTube videos is yeah. how I figured out mm-hmm. how to, how to start doing that. So yeah. I had just come from, uh, we had gone down to Bernie, Texas to visit my dad. Mm-hmm. Um, and we really liked Texas. Yeah. And so we were like, man, this is cool. What, what kind of, what kind of stuff is there to, to do for jobs out here? Because we had, we had moved down here to Las Vegas from central Washington. We had a, a chicken farm. Out Don't in get the to there. Don't skip my part of the story. Okay. 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 Yeah. But like, yeah, <laughs> I know. So I'm just, I'm just saying how I met you. Yeah. We're going to get to how you got to this point. Yeah. Okay. But that's how I met Owen. Yeah. I was taking a poop at the gym. Fucking drinking bros. Yeah. But you've got, business. yeah, but like, this is going to be a fun, this is going to be a fun show because here's like, you're, you know, I'm a busy guy. I got things to think about. Your right? life isn't top, but here's, here's what I know about you. You've been beat with a wrench. Yes. You've been stabbed. Five times. You've been blown up. Yep. Um, you've sold houses, Yep. you've worked on a farm, you've been in the army yep. and now you spend your time filming my sweaty stump in high <laughs> definition. <laughs> and that's what I know about you. Yeah. Right? You got a wife, you got four kids. Yep. Um, and, and you're, a, you're, uh, an ambitious dude and you're a very passionate dude. I and, like to like, figure stuff out. Right. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting. You've done a lot of things. I have. Um, so there's other shit in there. You don't yeah, even know. No, no, we're going to fucking find out, but we're going to start <laughs> at the beginning. Where are you from? I'm from, I'm from Washington. I'm from, uh, I grew up South of Seattle. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Kent, Washington area. Um, I liked Sean Kemp growing up. Did you, were you a Seattle Supersonics fan? Did you care much for basketball? Because Gary Payton and Sean Kemp were a fucking duo. They were. They were. Yeah, I they liked were. that shit. Yeah, old Sonics. What was what was um, what what would you do? Like, just fast track me from ages zero to high school. Did you play sports? What kind of kid were you? No, what I were wasn't. You into? I uh, I was big into skateboarding and uh, and surfing, and, or not not so much surfing, but um. 
uh, snowboarding. Okay. Yeah, because sure. we had the mountains were like 45 minutes away. So, yeah. so we had a ski club at our school that we could, once school was out, we'd leave and, and head up to the mountains at, and ski once a week. That's cool. So that was that was that was life. So you weren't like an athletic dude or a tough guy or nothing no, like that. Definitely not so a tough guy. At what point did you join? So you're just kind of like a normal. Yeah, I was a, really, a, a, like a good childhood, like a good upbringing. Yeah, totally. Parents who cared yep. and yeah, I, I think I hung you. out with uh, hung out with kind of the the shithead crowd in sure. high school mostly because I was bored. Yeah. Um, and they were fun. Yeah. But um. When I was like 17, kind of did a survey of what my options were looking like for when I moved out of the house. And just like, not like, good. These not aren't not looking like, good. Like, wait, you guys are going to stop paying my bills Fuck. in like 16 months? I got to figure some I'm shit out. Fucked. Yeah. <laughs> so so I joined the army when I was 17. Yeah. Just to just do the leave. delayed entry program yep. things. You give yourself your own high and tight. Yep. Yeah, me too. Uh, right. Yeah, I did. Yeah, dude. No, I was, so my I sister a, gave me a high and tight. I was she? like, no fade. Just fucking just Officer go. Farva. Buzz, you know, that, yep. that haircut. I was that dork, man, but I was, um, super motivated. I think so. I had a Mohawk at the time yeah. and the recruiter. I've seen pictures of you thing. in a Mohawk and you Western? colored it too, right? Oh yeah, it was red. It's pretty, pretty awful. I mean, yeah. I've done a lot of things, but I never had a red, red Mohawk. <laughs> no, I just get, I, I did. I was a, I was an exchange student in high school oh, and I went to right Germany on. and I didn't tell my mom, but I came home with orange hair. Did you? Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. When I, when I, um, when I dyed it over there, my, uh, uh, the the house that I was living in, the the woman, the mom, her name was uh, Valtraut, and she cried because she was like, "How am I going to explain this to your mother?" And I was like, "Don't fucking worry about it." Don't you know? worry. Yeah, mom, mom yeah. will understand. Yeah. I was just a fat, nasty, chubby stoner. That's kid funny. What year did you? Hair. What year did you go? Like what remember. high school? Year? Like I think I think it was my sophomore year. Okay, but I can't. You see the sophomore junior. Yeah, I year. tried to yeah. go do foreign exchange because I was taking Japanese. In what? high school. Yeah, our school had Japanese. Wow, that's interesting. And it was, no, I'd never heard of it being offered at another school, so I took that and uh, tried to get into the foreign exchange program, and the teacher didn't like me. Really? See, yeah. that's why, so I got I got to do it because of all the, dude, I was a shithead in school. Yeah. I was awful, but I loved this German class. Yeah. And I was really good. I, I, was, was, like, yeah. I was, like, fluent in German, or, like, relatively fluent. Right. I don't remember... I remember some things, but I don't, you know... Maybe I could probably pick it up easier now yeah. than if I didn't have any background in it, but I um, I was I was good, and so I, I was the only person that was offered to be a part of this program, you know? I was like, fuck, that's awesome. So, first, we hosted a guy. His, okay. name, his name is... So, it was like, he comes here, and then I go there, you know? And his name was Johannes, and it was funny. He came here, and he was a good dude, and I was like, hey, man, check it out. We don't go to school and we smoke a lot of weed. And so like <laughs> he, he, he smoked weed over here for the first time. And then like three months later, when I like after he left, I went over there like three months later, uh -huh. full blown fucking stoner. Oh I like, man. I was like, fuck dude. I ruined this we dude. ruined that guy. But he was a <laughs> sick ass drummer, man. So um, that's funny. Yeah. So he would probably have become a stoner at some point. Anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who wouldn't, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, so you joined the army. Yeah. Because of why? Just something. Just to go do something, yeah. learn mm -hmm. something. Yeah. Get, no get major, out. No major patriotic story. What year did you join? Because you're fucking 96. old. Jesus. Fuck, dude. I was 11 years old. Yeah. I was 11. Yeah, I, joined I didn't in, even start masturbating yet. No. When you started. I mean, no, like 13? Yeah, probably. You know? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I joined, when I, I joined in 96, and then we left. Like, uh, um, I joined with my buddy, uh, Jeff, who, and we were on the buddy program, which... Uh, we were told there was a buddy program, but literally getting off the bus, they were like, you this way, you that way. And I didn't see Jeff again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah, there's oh, a yeah. buddy program Wait, all the way through. we're on the buddy program. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, get the 96, fuck over there. You're like, oh, you two are gay? Yeah, no problem, no problem. We'll keep you together. Yeah, yeah right, you know. <laughs> yeah, That's so funny. we learned, we, we, we laughed at that when we connect like later yeah. on be like, yeah fucking buddy program he ended up getting stationed like at lewis uh fort lewis right by our house oh that's cool and then i went to um i went to korea for my first no oh, shit there. so yeah. you did you, okay so you were uh i know that you were uh, a charlie did you did you join 11, 11 uh, x-ray or what no, was the, your... the first time i was a pogue i was a i was a uh, combo guy the oh, first shit. time yeah because at dude. 17 at 17 <laughs> i was like i'm gonna go learn a skill that I can then leverage God, into you get, would you right you would 
Ugh. I didn't know. I so I can't. I, you make bad decisions when yeah. you were a kid, and I didn't. Yeah. I didn't have a clear picture because I did sure. not grow up in a military family. Yeah. So I had no idea like yeah. what that stuff looked oh, like. Oh, I didn't either. But I didn't go combo. I know. Fuck. Yeah. But anyway, it's haunted me ever yeah, since. So so you go. You go. Where was your basic training for that yeah. then? Fort Jackson. Where's that? Uh, South Carolina. Oh, all right. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Yeah, it's a f- close it's a to Myrtle s- Beach. There, did you get to go at all? Or not no? at all. No. But like it's the entire base, I'm convinced is just sand. Like, really? It's just it's just sand everywhere. Yeah. Fort Jackson. We were there in did, August. But did you ever? Is, you must have gone through Benning for infantry. So I was in the army later. twice. Yeah, yeah. I was in, and then I got out, and we'll get into that. Okay. And then sure. when I went back, when I came back, I was in, just thinking because that's actually called Sand Hill. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so I did Sand so Hill. Ja- okay. All later. right. Yeah. So, all right. So Jackson, basic training, blah, yep. blah, 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 blah. Anything eventful. Nothing. It's just fucking dumb. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It was the nineties. Like nothing was really going on. And so really? I was in, um, when nine 11 happened and we were actually out on a field training exercise when the planes crashed into the building. Where, uh, okay. So you, you go to basic training, you go, you, they send you right to Korea. Yeah. I went straight Damn. to Korea. And <laughs> how long funny. were you there? I was there for a year, and when so when we landed, when we landed in Korea, they have drills every, like all the time. Like, hey, the fucking North Koreans are coming down. Like, the alarms go off, and everyone goes into like react to North Korea mode. So we landed during one of those, and so we're fresh out of AIT. We don't have a fucking clue like what the army's all about, and dudes are running around in gas masks, and the Patriot missile systems are like going crazy on the flight deck. And they're like, you guys need to get off this plane and get into that fucking building. And so I landed in Korea, like, what the, f-? like, I thought I landed in Iraq. Yeah. Like, what the fuck is going on right now? Actually, landing in Iraq sounds more casual <laughs> than, than that. <laughs> this was nuts. Dude, so the Patriot missile systems were going off? Dude, yeah, like, well, so, they weren't, dude, like, shooting, but oh, they were, okay, like, dude, tracking I, imaginary. I only heard recently, I thought the Patriot systems were, like, they shoot a missile. But no, it's like a fucking... Aren't they big ass rockets? I, or I saw some sort of, well, I guess, I guess I can't, I don't know. I saw a video of some missile defense system. Yeah. And it's basically just like a fucking, like a constant machine Barrage. gun. And it just like follows the fucking thing until oh, it wow. shoots the, yeah, I don't know these what were that like, was. Because my understanding is the Patriot system is missiles, right? Yeah. I don't know. They're yeah. missiles. This, this was like, one, it, it, it was like a truck with a huge box thing yeah. on the back. And yeah, I don't know. I was, I, Fuck with South Korean 18? scuds. 18 at the, yeah, no <laughs> shit. Exactly. We're like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Welcome yeah. to Korea. And then we figured out quickly after when they all started laughing at how scared we looked that yeah. it was just a drill and these happened monthly and nobody's and these guys were like, ugh. Yeah. So yep. you're in Korea. Anything eventful? You're in Korea. Nothing. Nothing. No. Just doing your job. Just doing, doing job. combo. Yep. Licking, licking, uh, Licking them, cables stick and lick them yeah. and stick them, lick them and stick them. <laughs> Let's lick them and stick. Is that what you do when you guys roll into combat? Let's yep. lick them and stick them, it? boys. It's the yeah. it's the mantra. <laughs> <laughs> so I was in a, I was in a tank unit there, and then after Korea went to uh, Fort Carson, Colorado. After that, and I was That's in a, really nice. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty. That was mm-hmm. a great, great yeah. place. Um, I was in a combat heavy engineer, so they built shit like roads and yeah. and whatnot. And so when I was there, we went to, I won't call it a deployment, but we went to um, uh, Central America. There was a, a hurricane that had come through, and I think it was Hurricane Ike back then in like 99. Oh, I, I heard about that. It fucked the region up. And so we got to deploy down there um, with, uh, it was like a multi-task unit, but all our engineer guys got to go, and we built um, we built wells for a couple little small what village. Part, what part of South it's America. Guatemala. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And I think we were on the east coast of, the, like, the eastern side of Guatemala. Okay. So we did that. We built some wells. We built a school. Um, and we were, this is actually really cool, we were the last rotation going through. So we also had to tear down our camp. And we had, like, fucking 10 tons of food that that they were going to bury. They were literally going to just take the, like dig a hole and bury this. That was the military's plan. Yeah. Like, tell Hey, me, we tell did. Me you guys pass it out to the people. We did. Okay. Our first Jesus sergeant, Christ. our first sergeant was like, <laughs> fuck this. Yeah. Put it on those trucks. And we found like a little like Guatemalan orphanage up in the hills. Yeah. Drove our trucks all the way up there and like gave, um, food to the sisters who, who ran this place. Yeah. And the, the little kids 
came and like pushed us out of the way and they were downloading the box. Like, yeah. so we just sat there and smoked while these kids unloaded uh, all their food. Yeah. It's, cool. It was super cool. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's a nice experience then. So. At 19, it was definitely something I needed to see. Cause yeah. when I came back from that, my, my priorities definitely shifted. Cause it was the first time that I had seen poverty on yeah. like a real scale where I was like, Whoa. Sure. Yeah. This is how the rest of the world lives. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a, that's a cool part about joining the military. If you, um, get in the right job and if you're paying attention, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll make it grow. It open really your fast. eyes fast. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Some people, but some people are, are able to serve and, and, um, not get that point. Yep. You know, a little, a little too selfish sometimes. But, right. Uh, yeah. So, all right. So, um, what's after Guatemala? Guatemala ended up at Schofield Barracks, Hawaii on a reenlistment. What the fuck, dude? You, you, Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. You know, like, fuck you already. Because, like, so this is, like, yeah. your first three years. You're, so your first three years in the Army, you're just chilling. You go to fucking Korea. You go to Guatemala. You go Korea, to Hawaii. Yeah. You go to Fort Carson, Colorado. You know yeah. what I did my first fucking three years in the Army? Yeah. Iraq, 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 Iraq. <laughs> shot. So none of that shit existed Gunshot yet. wound, yeah. None of that yeah. shit. Yeah. Had, this was before so Schofield Barracks. And uh, yeah. that's, uh, that's, uh, that's Pearl Harbor. Yeah. Yeah. And they, yep. they, um, uh, they're still, uh, if we visited Oahu, okay. Um, a couple of years ago and, and we got an invite to go over and, and like walk through and see. So that I, I guess there's still like some fucking bullet holes in yeah. runways and, and like strafing and shit oh, like yeah. that. And you can just sort of walk through the bar down the street from my house. Cause we lived off, uh, cause I met, I met my wife there. Um, oh, that's where you met Talia. Yeah. I met was her she there. fucking native there. What the fuck? No. Was she so doing there? funny story is, so I, I was I was gonna ETS from um I was gonna ETS from Fort Carson. I was done. I was like, I'm I don't like my job, I don't like what, what I'm doing. I, I was getting into music. I wanted to get into like music production. Um raves were super huge at the time. So we were doing festivals and stuff on the weekend and 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 loving that. And I was like, I wanna make music. This is this is what I wanna do. And the the re enlistment NCO got a hold of me and was like so you, you're going to get out or, you know, what do you, what's your plan? What are you going to do? You know, we got this buddy system. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right? Well, so I'm sitting there talking to him with that in my mind. I'm like, mm. there's nothing you're going to tell me that's yeah. going to get me to fucking reenlist. And like, he's like, I got this crisp $20 bill. Like, Check this out. Yeah. He's like, what if I could get you Hawaii? And I was like, eh, that's, that's, nah, I don't, I don't think it's worth it. He's like, no, 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 no. Check this out. If, if the average vacation stay is like, you know, two weeks, most one week, two weeks, he's like, you meet girls when they fly in and you hang out with them oh, man. and then you put them on the plane and then you, you, you're on to the next. And at 19, that's, you're like 20 yeah. or 20, maybe I was 20 yep. or 21. I don't, I don't remember. I was like, dude, that's fucking yeah. That's brilliant. So I signed so up. So you're 19 cock strong. You're going to go over there and fuck puss. I'm gonna just and then you end up lit. getting fucking hitched for the next 20, 30 years. Now? Yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. It's funny how that shit works, huh? Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Married the first girl I met. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Yep. And and we just had our, our 19 year anniversary. Yeah, Friday, Friday. right? Friday. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. Yep. So you guys, um, was she there vacationing? Or? Yeah, she was visiting a friend who I had, so it was Valentine's day and the chow hall closed early and I was pissed cause I was broke. Cause I spent all my money going to the bars and, and it had like new rims on my car and all this stupid shit. And so I went to and my, your, your music career. Wasn't yeah. My music off career wasn't, side. no, it wasn't, it wasn't paying the bills <laughs> <Yeah>. yet. <laughs> Never did. So I went over to, I went over to our friend's house who always had food and, um, and Talia was over there visiting her friend. And so kind of like said, Hey, you know, what's up as I'm raiding the refrigerator. And, and then, um, I don't think I hung out very long and then I left and the next night she was flying out of, she was flying out of Honolulu on like a, on a Friday and we were dropping her off to go see a DJ scribbles concert, uh, who was playing down, at, uh, at one of the bars. And as we're driving down, I was like, so, so you have to, you're in a rush to go home. She's like, no, it's just, I, I just, I flew out on a Friday. I was like, well, yeah, but you don't have to work for like two days. Why, why are you, why are you leaving? Hawaii? You're here in Hawaii with a place to stay. Why don't you stay through Sunday? It's like, well, well, you know, I already booked the ticket. I was like, I can get your ticket changed. Like that's fucking easy. And so this was back when you could just park in front of an airport and, and yeah. walk into it. And so we did that and I went and I got her ticket changed and she stayed an extra couple of days. 
went to the concert and then uh yeah the rest is like but so you were stationed in hawaii yeah and and, and you'd re-enlisted yeah so, so i was there for th- i was going to be there for i was there for three years yeah okay yeah. Where, where's she from where She's an Air Force brat, so she's from everywhere. Okay. She was born in Montana, but her dad was a like a whatever a master sergeant equivalent is in the Air Force. Okay. So he was she traveled all over the place. Where was she living at the time? Um, here in Vegas. Oh no shit. Yeah. Oh okay. Yeah, she was a dental assistant here, um, and uh, and yeah, just out out visiting a friend and. So how long did it take for her to move out to Hawaii or did a couple months? She did. That's pretty quick. It's so (laughs) we talked. So this was this was pre social media. You guys are like the fucking point oh oh one percent of this shit happening because you're what twenty years old. We were. I think we got when we got married when we were I think twenty two. So yeah, yeah, so we're like twenty one when we when we met Mm -hmm. and then um and then we emailed back and forth for uh, yeah like fucking emailed I, that, yeah. I had forgotten what she looked like by the oh, time yeah. so so she sent me like physical pictures like and right, i sent her yeah. pictures because mm-hmm. we were having trouble remembering and then uh and then um yeah we talked on the phone a lot with that was weird back in the day huh when you yeah. just like sit there and talk on your landline for on my three landline hours. barracks but phone. then you, you know if you're trying to play a video game and somebody gets on the phone and cuts off your internet or you can't make a phone call i don't even think we had that yet derek's dude. playing starcraft 2 again <laughs> you know? oh yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah. So, so like, so this is this is what 2000, 2001, something like that. Yeah, two thousand one. Because okay. we, she had moved over there. She, it was it was two thousand. Okay. So she moved over there to to see what's up and uh, to 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 find out. Like, yeah, to date. Yeah, to date sure. me and mm-hmm. see what's up. Yeah. And that impressed the fuck out of me. Somebody who would sell all their shit and buy a one way ticket to somewhere where she knew nobody. Or she knew, well, she had, like, it was Hawaii. She, yeah, it was Hawaii. So it was a hard she, sell. She had a decent fallback, fallback <laughs> plan. You know, she's like, hey, if it doesn't work out, I live in Hawaii I now. live in Hawaii, you know? and there's yeah. four military bases. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> 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 Not exactly slim no. pickings. Yeah. No. Mm-hmm. No. Downsides, very little. That's so, funny. yeah. So we dated for we dated for a few months, and then, and then I could kind of see where it was going, and then Asked her to marry that me. That twenty-two-year-old wisdom, yeah. right? I was just like, I mean, you, you got dude, lucky because, like, for all the dumb <laughs> shit I did when I was in my twenties, yeah. I picked good people to be around. Yeah, and and she's like definitely one of the best people who I yeah. picked. No, that's uh, I you know I I like um, I like hearing this story of how you guys met and things like that because I only know you now, right? And and I I know I take up a lot of your time, and she's at home with four kids all the time, and every day, and she's just like handles. I mean, that's. Yeah. She Brutal. holds it down, dude. Yeah, and like it seems <laughs> like she just like holds it down without complaint or frustration. Yeah. She just supports the fuck out of you. Yep. And she understands right. that, you know, you got to go out and do your thing Yeah. when you're doing your thing. And then when it's time to family, it's time to family. So yep. that's cool. So, so yeah, so you guys just, you know, shit just works out and you're in shit the just army. Out. And then yep. we fest. So where, so you started talking about it. 9-11 happened. 9-11 where, where happened. Um, and this was so 2001, obviously. And then I don't think I had very much time left on my contract, like to get it to get in or get out. And it was it was weird because I thought back on this, like, oh man, why didn't I stay in? And there was like I don't remember hearing anything about a possibility of us going to Iraq. Like there was no sure that, there that, was didn't, no that started March 2003 or so, right? Yeah. yeah. So. So I got out in 03 and I think I got out like right as that was happening. So I had already ETS, I was on terminal leave and then all of a sudden they're like we're going to Iraq. And I was sitting on my couch with no fucking job in in Seattle just like like I got depressed. Like I was like yeah. dude, everybody who I know is going over there. Yeah. I'm totally going to miss so all this what, stuff. What, so you got out in 2003. Yeah, I got out okay. in 03. Yeah. And then we ended up we ended up moving back to Seattle because because in our 20s, we wanted, like, the big city, and, and I was familiar with Seattle. So we moved back and lived in, like, like downtown, 2nd Street, Seattle, big city. Yeah, that's cool. It was that's awesome. Fun. Yeah. I did. I got that out of my system. I lived in Denver. Yeah. Downtown Denver. Same thing. Downtown. Seven, yep. 17th and Pearl. Yep. Got you, it out got, of my system. You got, you got to do it once, it's you know? It's fun, dude. Like, and the food you, and the bars. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But then you uh, then you don't go out every night. And then it's easier to sleep when you don't hear uh, cop cars. Right. 
at two at two a.m. every dudes morning, yeah. yelling crazy mm-hmm. ass shit yeah. at two in the morning. They're like I don't, I'm not worried about a homeless person taking my package off nope. my doorstep here. Yeah, no. but you got it. But it is, it is <laughs> nice just to walk two blocks and yeah. you're, at the, you're at the place that you're drinking that night. Um. So all right, so you're in Seattle. We're in Seattle. Got out of the army. Typical, not doing well. Yeah, just kind of, just kind of didn't, just kind of felt lost. Didn't, didn't really know what to do. And and uh, at, did you give up on your music career at this point? Long, long, <laughs> long ago, long ago. I still can't give it up, but yeah. I, and it ain't gonna take. Me I anywhere. gave. I think I gave up on that before it actually started. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that's funny, and that that makes sense. It fits my idea of who you are. Okay, try every Mister. Yeah. Try everything, right? Okay. So, um, did you, did you get, what, what year did you go? Cause you went back in the army. I went back in 09. Oh no shit. So there was a yes, six, there's year, like six, six year, year gap. Year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so I did f- a bunch of stuff. Um, I, I, I ended up finding, so I'm like serial entrepreneur trying to, trying to like start my own things, mm-hmm. it, but, but I've never been like friends with people who have done that. So it's kind of sure. just like make it up as you go and see yeah. what fucking works. And I think, I think, you know, I think, um, I think you're aware of this. I think one of, one of it's like, so people like that and maybe you felt you, you've done like the serial entrepreneur thing yeah. is, um, people start a business and it doesn't work out yep. right away. And then you go to another thing yep. and then you go to another thing and you go to another thing and you never stick to with one thing long enough. Right. And I've struggled with this. Pretty much. And I think that me and you have done a good job this last year. Yes. And I've had to fucking <laughs> reel you in a few times. <laughs> be like, hey, Owen, what if instead of doing these next 12 things, right. why don't we focus on these four things? Do these four really good. And we'll really just do good. them really good for a while. Yep. You know? Yeah. yeah. So you just, but yeah, that's that's the thing. You sort of just bounce around, especially after the army. You're like, I don't know what to do. Any college? No. So I did. At, so the whole thing with going in as a combo guy was at the time, um, telecommunications was huge. Mm-hmm. And if you could, if you could kind of learn the trade, you could walk into these jobs and, and like start starting pay 70, 80,000 bucks. Yeah. And so like right when I got out the, the dot com or the, I forget which bubble it was, but there was some stock market bubble that had burst. So all the telecommunications jobs went away. Mm. And I went on a few job interviews and I remember sitting in the office getting ready to go get interviewed. And there's guys who are like twice my age, like forties and fifties or 50 year olds who had been doing this job for like decades. Yeah. And, and that's cause it turns they, out your military experience doesn't mean as much shit. as uh, you, you maybe thought it would. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, so I ended up finding, um, I was into motorcycles. We rode motorcycles a lot over in, uh, um, uh, Hawaii. Okay. And it, between Oh three and Oh nine, is that when you tried to sell a motorcycle? Yeah. Yeah. Tell so, me, tell, tell everybody that. Story. So I got a job at Ducati, Seattle and is I that was, how you say it. Cause I thought it's Ducati. No, it's Ducati. 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 It's, a town. It's, it's not like Djibouti. Nope. Ducati. No. Ducati. Yep. Du- Italian motorcycles. Ducati. There was a place right down the street for me and they were hiring a salesman and, uh, I think I had gone in there to find out how much a leather suit was because I wanted to start racing. Um, of course, right? Because because <laughs> maybe I have a career didn't take yeah, off. But I you weren't going to be a, a telecom, motorcycle racer. Uh, build, yeah, <laughs> Good, possible possible yeah, racer. Sure. So I went in and I talked my way into a job with this with the owner of of the place, and I started selling motorcycles. And so I I did that for a while. I did that for maybe maybe a year. Sold sold bikes but it wasn't enough. Like I wasn't making enough money. Really? These yeah. bikes are $20,000 bikes, but the margins are real slim. So you don't, what would, what would be your commission on a sale? A couple hundred bucks. That's it. Oh yeah, shit. I think what the I, fuck? That's I, not even a job, dude. Cause no. you, you only sell maybe how many bikes a month on them. So we sold, I sold more scooters. I made more money selling scooters oh, than I did. Dude, I on almost the bikes. got a, what's, what's the scooter line called? You had Vespas. Vespas. Yeah. I, I almost bought a Vespa when I was living in Denver. They're I was like, fun, Fuck man. yeah, dude. Or it's like, uh, um, do you like scrubs? Uh-huh. So yeah. it's like, you know, when Carla, she's like, I trust Turk because she's going to let him <laughs> pick their family car. <laughs> yeah. And somebody and was like, and, and somebody, somebody was like, was like, you can't give a man that trust. And she's like, I know that Turk will make the right decision for me. <laughs> and she walks out of the hospital. And he's like, check it out, baby. <laughs> Scooters. <laughs> 
He got him, Carla, and JD all a Vespa. Solid and, uh, investment. Yeah, dude. Yep. It is so funny. Fuck, great plan. That's one of my best. Le- Check it out, baby. <laughs> Scooters. <laughs> Scooters. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So. So I started going to, uh, one of the things I remember, like my dad had always, my dad always, uh, bought, bought real estate, like to have rentals and stuff. And Mm -hmm. I remember as I'm trying to figure out what I, what I want to do that, you know, there's, there's something bigger than selling motorcycles. I need, I need a plan. And he's like, I always wish I would have got my, my real estate license because I would have saved a ton of money on commissions when I was buying my own rentals. And I could have used that commissions as, as down payment. And so I was like, okay, that makes makes sense. Like maybe, maybe I go and get, uh, my real estate license and, um, and you know, start, start working towards building wealth like that. Yeah. Um, I'd been reading lots of books on real estate investing and stuff. So like which one did you read rich dad, poor dad? I started with that one. Yeah. I fucking hate that book. Yeah. I, I call it, So I, I, I have this whole, so actually I went through a, I went through a phase where I was reading about money and I yeah. read like, um, you know, Napoleon Hill, okay. Robert Kiyosaki yep. books, and yep. then things like Think and Grow Rich or, yep. or like How to Win Friends and Influence People and yep. all this kind of like genre of book. Totally. And then I called it, and this is this is true in like the entrepreneurial coaching world. This is, this is I call it the Robert Kiyosaki effect. Okay. You know, play with people's emotions. Right. Tell them you can help them. Yep. And then never give them any kind of real world information that'll actually help them. Right. <laughs> Actual tangible yeah, steps yeah. to work towards. It's the Robert Kiyosaki effect. Yeah. And it's just, it just loops and it, and it transforms. Yeah. You know? And so it's like this. So that's like, like, so that guy, like, sure. He made money in real estate, Selling but, where books. He, but where he really made and money systems. And here's, here's what's up, dude. I was, uh, you know, I got the TSGLI. Yep. Um, so I had, you know, like 25 K and I needed, and that's, that's why I was trying to learn about money. I'd never had money, right? you know, and, and, uh, before I pissed it all away on Jack Daniels, I had, <laughs> I had some money in my checking account right. before I, this was before I was told I was getting medically retired. Okay. So I was trying to do the right thing, but I was also on a shit ton of fucking opiates. Yeah. I wasn't abusing them. That right. like my pain was very yeah. bad. Um, so I was, uh, reading, you know, rich dad, poor dad and things like that. And so I signed up for his mentorship program. Yeah. It's 5,000 fucking dollars. Yeah. You know what they did? You know what they did for me? What? Sent me a fucking board game. I've played that board game. Rat race. Yes. Fuck that shit. I was like, fuck that. And fuck you. I didn't I pay like, $5,000 for it. Yeah. And then, and then, you know what? I kind of looked at it. And I was like, and I asked, him, I was like, Hey, before I even start this program, I, I regret making this decision. Is there right. any, is there any kind of like refund option or anything like that? And they're like, He's, Nope. So I got nothing and they took yeah. my $5,000. I'm like, fuck you, bitch. Yep. And that's not how we run our business. No. If you have like, when no. somebody, when somebody buys a shirt and they're like, Hey, it's the wrong size. What should I do? I was There's like, a new one. give me your address. Yep. You know, stand by, you yep. know, like, Hey, I'm not happy with this product. Oh, that's yeah. That's all good. Here's your money. You that's know, funny like, dude. So I read a lot of those same books mm-hmm. and I never actually wrote the check, but talked to a lot of those same mm-hmm. guys for the coaching and mentorship. Yeah. And so and kind of figured you out talk their game. to me about, some of the things we talk about now, uh-huh. there's a reason yeah. that no, I'm I get anti, it. right? Very skeptical. Dude got ripped <laughs> off. It's hard. It's a hard lesson to learn. Or it's not even that. It's like who, who are we getting the information from? Why? Right. What? How? How? How have they thought of something we're not? We're on the path. Mm-hmm. We're on the right track. Let's just keep going. But yeah. So I read those books and things yeah, like that. It's funny. Yeah. Same ones. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I had at the time I had a brand new Yamaha R1. Um, bike that that um it was like the only thing i had of mm-hmm. value and yeah. so i i was gonna sell that bike to pay for school to do all the classes required to get my real estate license okay so i was selling my motorcycle on i don't know if it was craigslist i know it was it was ebay i, I don't think craigslist had quite popped but this is this is on the internet you were selling on the internet. yeah and and I am an urban legend. This and this story will tell you, like the urban legend of like you got to be careful meeting people on the internet to sell stuff, or never, never meet somebody at your house mm-hmm. type of thing. This is this is why. Well, let's let's not scare people into not being friendly, but shit happens. Shit yeah. happens. So, um, yeah. so I'm selling a bike on eBay, and guy messages me, and he's like, "Hey, I'm you know interested in the bike." He comes over on like midweek. On in downtown Seattle during the day, and I work at a dealership. So I'm like, 
cool with him taking the bike for for a ride i was like cool yeah no problem let me let me get a copy of your driver's license and then go take it for a ride and come mm-hmm. back let me know what you think so i do that send him on his way and he's gone for like a half hour and he comes back and he's like dude bike's sick i love it i you know what what's your, what's your bottom dollar and so i think i think we negotiated like seven thousand dollars for the bike oh okay yeah so yeah. i was happy with that and he's gonna get a new bike and so as we were sitting out there talking um, he mentions his uncle's name, who I know from racing on the weekends, doing track days with the guys at the bike shop. And so I totally change my naturally kind of cautious when dealing with strangers demeanor to where now I'm dealing with a friend. Oh, okay. Like, hey, yeah. cool. Like, mm-hmm. hey, let's go take care of this off the street and let's go inside my apartment and yeah. we'll sign the title and and uh, you can pay for it. So we go in. To my apartment, which is like one, it's not quite ground floor. It's like kind of half a story up. So we walk into my apartment and, and I, I go over and I grab the title and I kind of turn down, um, to, to sign all the paperwork. And all of a sudden, like everything starts flashing white and I hear this really loud, like crack. I'm like, what the fuck is that noise? It's a wrench to your skull. It's a fucking wrench. Yeah. And it's getting bashed into the back so of my head. this guy just starts beating you. Totally kind of walked around behind me and had pulled out a wrench out of his out of his backpack and starts going to town on the back of my head. And um, So he just had a wrench in his back. So yeah. he kind of had this. He must he, have had this somewhat pre-planned. Or if, if, if there was an opportunity, he was going to take it. Yeah. So in hindsight, looking at back on the whole thing, our, our suspicion was he was either in trouble with someone and needed needed a motorcycle to quash that or was trying to get in with somebody and totally shit the bed on his first motorcycle robbery. Yeah. So, so he's hitting me. I get hit probably about three, four times before I even realize I'm getting hit. Yeah. Then by that point I have no, like my equilibrium's all fucked up. I'm seeing yeah. stars. I'm totally out of it. And there's this dude I've, I've rolled over onto my back and this guy standing over me just like, going to town on my face and, yeah. and hit me with this wrench. And so I, I jumped up and I ran to, to the front door and this building was really cool. It was, um, it was like from the thirties. So we had like those crystal doorknobs, like everything was really old. And yeah. me, I didn't realize how much I had, I had been bleeding already. Mm-hmm. So I was covered down to my hands, had blood all over them. And so when I went to get out of, the house because I was just gonna run like fuck it like yeah. it's a motorcycle this isn't worth yeah. getting your ass kicked sure over. yeah and you're already kind of losing the fight F- I'm F- losing like I'm, we didn't the third bash to the head yeah. with a fucking wrench yeah you you're, yeah but we, okay we didn't start off very so well you chose to get the fuck <laughs> out of get, there get the fuck out all right I'm retreat yeah and so when I went to reach for the doorknob it just, just spun yeah. like I had lotion all over my Couldn't hands get that motherfucker I got it open like two inches like three three inches just enough to get my arm in there. And then he jumped on the the door and started smashing my elbow in the door no until shit. it got closed. So now he's standing between me and and the front door. And I'm like, fuck, how, how, how am I going to get out of this? And I had a coat closet like back to like right behind my right side. And I had a shotgun inside there that was unloaded. And I knew it was unloaded because the day before I had forgot to go buy ammunition for it to, to have. And so... My thoughts, which which were going super fast at the time, yeah. it was like, if I can bluff my way out of this, I'm bringing something into this fight that he won't be able to use against me. Yeah, if if he gets control of it, so I I make my move and I try and get the shotgun and I pull it out and and as I'm pulling it across because I'm not left handed and I had to yeah. I had to it was I'm holding it opposite as mm-hmm. I would as I'm pulling it across he jumps on top of me grabs the shotgun we fall to the ground and um and he he you know chambers it and pulls the trigger i hear the motherfucker he click. To fucking kill you oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right there yeah, yeah i'm like oh fuck so yeah. so we're we're kind of i'm fighting from my back at this point in the hallway um of, of a one-bedroom apartment yeah and we had um is Talia at work? She's at work. Okay. And she's waiting for me to pick her up. Okay. So she's sometime in this hour, hour and a half, gonna be standing outside her building waiting mm-hmm. for me to come get her. All right. So so he gets he gets the shotgun and he drops it and I kind of get to my feet and and he's 
<clears throat> he's like, um, I was like, dude, just take the fucking bike. Like, just take the bike. And he's mumbling shit like it's it's not about the bike. I was sent here. And I'm like, what the For what fuck yeah. are you talking about? <laughs> like, this is nuts. Yeah. So I have this huge, like, it's probably, it was probably like six feet or seven foot wide, like plate glass window that kind of overlooked the sidewalk. And at the point where he's trying to shoot the shotgun that's not unloaded, I'm like, I'm going out the window. Like, you ran, jump out the window? I'm going the glass? head first out the window. This is happening. Because your head's already fucking broken. I'm already yeah. bleeding. Yeah. It's not that big of a fall. I can definitely survive this. Yeah. So I get up and I sprint and I go fucking as fast as I can out the window. And right as I'm about to jump, he trips my back leg and I. God, dude, I, you can. You oh, just gets, can't win this fight. No. No, I trip and I go head first into the little, the 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 wall part mm-hmm. that's below the window and just crash straight first into that, and so he <laughs> follows me. Oh yeah, no, <laughs> right? <laughs> you can't make it up. Yeah. So I crash straight into the wall and my stereo system has a surround sound speaker and these are like those little four inch by four inch cube speakers that are on a metal pole that have a little heavy base that kind of holds the speaker up. Okay. I crash into that. Did you grab it's, it? I'm grabbing did it. You I'm like, start fighting back. I did. I'm totally fighting back. Right. This is yeah. happening, dude. Okay, Ready? Good. Yeah. It's so been, I'm like, t- I'm going to a little bit. I'm going to yeah. bash this motherfucker's head in with yeah. this. I go to swing it at his head, but this goddamn <laughs> stereo cord <laughs> is attached to the fucking stereo. Don't, don't, this pulls, is like a fucking cartoon. Dude, you can't. Where, where the, where the, everything this, yeah. I tried to do just <laughs> did not happen. <laughs> so it rips out of my hand mid-swing <laughs> and falls to the ground, and he tackles he tackles me, and we're standing by, we're at Talia's, uh, Talia's craft desk right there. Yeah, okay. And so as I as I now crumble down to the ground because he's, he's fucking punching me and shit, he grabs... um. He grabs her scissors off the table, which are like those long... They're fourth, shears. They're shears. They're shears. Black yeah. handle, metal, fucking yeah. fabric cutting thing, and just starts fucking stabbing me in the head and the neck with those. And so I got I got stabbed, I think, about five or six times in the in the neck and then in the head. And it didn't, like, penetrate skull, sure, yeah. but, like, my my head was yeah. fucking open. Mm-hmm. And I'm, yeah. Dude, I, you know, I, was int- I, I can't, I it, like, I laugh. It's, I don't mean to be, no, it's, but it's just like, it's, Jesus, fuck, nothing was going your way. Nothing yeah. was going my oh way my in this gosh. fight, but I didn't quit. So how the fuck did it end? So did he just like, fuck this guy. He's really fucking hard to kill and I'm getting tired. So at this point, at this point, after he stabbed me, I kind of fell back and getting stabbed was weird because it, it was, um, Adrenaline is a crazy fucking thing, and guys who've been in firefights and stuff will can can definitely probably have vivid memories of how time gets slowed down. But I remember one of the times he's trying to he one of the times I got stabbed. It was the one in my neck. I remember the the his hand coming down, moving so slow that I had time to sit there and think. I was like, I should move my head so this doesn't hit me in the face. And I moved my head, and then it like buried into my fucking my fucking neck, and. It, it just the whole perception of how yeah. how it was fucking happening yeah. was weird. Must be somewhat cringy to uh, think about the times you got stabbed, right? And like what that felt like, huh? It burned. But yeah, <laughs> it burned <laughs> quite a bit. I, that's what I've heard. I've heard it fails. But dude, isn't it fucking wild how much a human can take? It's crazy, you know, and not give up. Know, like right? yeah, or just or no, like like the body. Yes, the body. How much the body can handle, like, right. and it, it's really odd, like what kills some people and what fucking doesn't. I seen right. a dude that got shot, like I can't remember, but it was either I know that it was either twenty two or twenty seven times. Jesus, and he was alive. Yeah, he was a fucking. He was an Iraqi guy. He was a prisoner. Yeah, you know, and I was like, what's wrong with this guy? He keeps making all this fucking noise, and they're like, he got shot twenty two. Or 27 times. I'm like, what the how, fuck? How the fuck yeah. is he still alive? He's still alive, you know? Yeah. So, so he just, so, so how did this end? So this ended with at, at right after I got stabbed, there's, there's blood everywhere. And, and I actually have, uh, I have a picture of this up on my Instagram. If anyone is curious to look at that, it's at O Lowerman. But, and I posted it like, I think a couple months ago yeah. during the anniversary. So it's like, it's not, I don't post every day, so it's it's not too far. But there's blood fucking everywhere in the living room, and 
I saw a look on his face where all of a sudden, I think the gravity of what had happened kind of set in. And so his, his face changed and and he, he backed up. Turns out he wasn't a killer, huh? No. So he started (laughs) looking for his stuff and I, I jumped up and I ran and this time tried to crush the fucking crystal doorknob in my hand, flung it out and, and, and ran out into the middle of the street at, I think probably like 11 on on a Tuesday or a screaming Wednesday for help or screaming like- for help and I ran up to the first people who I saw who were like walking back from the Seattle Center like beautiful oh hey it's sunny it's amazing yeah. we just had fun at the science center and then here comes jeffrey Dahmer's fucking meal yeah. running out <laughs> under the street head to knees covered in blood <laughs> and their faces changed and then uh like I kind of collapsed at that point and they called the police and the SWAT team showed up and it was a big fucking thing, but he had, he stole the bike right after that yeah. and, and took off. And they're like, how do you know this guy? I was like, I met him on the internet. He came over. He said, this is who the uncle is. I don't know if that's bullshit or not. Um, it was his uncle and the uncle, like the police went over and picked him up and the, he took the police over to the, to the kid's house. And at that point he had his clothes with my blood all over him. They, when they, when they pulled up, he was throwing the bag of clothes away in the dumpster. Really? And so the uncle oh. went up and talked him down and then, and then, uh, yeah, he got arrested and a trial happened for like, it went on forever for like two or almost three years um, and he ended up getting off with a insanity plea. No and shit. So he had his, I think the, the end result was he was ordered by the court to stay on meds cause he had stopped taking his meds or some fucking bullshit reason. But yeah, so that was my first time I almost died. And I had a, I had a kind of, how, how old were you? Uh, 20, 23, okay. 24. Yeah. A little late, but yeah, a right. little, yeah. little late Welcome for your first time, right? Good, you know, good of you to finally show up. <laughs> you know, I was 20, no big deal, no know. big deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah it uh, it, <laughs> I didn't hold on, I didn't like, like, I was it, it fucked me up for a while, but it, I think, I think I did well kind of moving past that and not letting it like paralyze me, still going to do stuff. I kind of walked away with a you could die at any minute doing anything yeah so fucking do whatever you want like yeah like jump like if you're interested in doing um, something try it have you had uh did you do any kind of therapy to i talked to the gravity of the i talked to somebody for a little bit that that kind of thing can change your world view totally but that kind of shit happens almost never and it's almost never going to happen to you. Right. But it, but it does happen to some, right. but like until you're the fucking, until you're the guy. Oh, one percent. Yeah. Right. Yes. But yeah. That, that can change a person's entire worldview. So it, did you get help for that or it, uh, I, I kind of, I talked to somebody as the court case was going on, but then, but then it, yeah. it, it wasn't a problem because I kind of took it and, and use it as a catalyst to like, so I went head into uh, real estate after that went head into your wall went fucking i did do that uh so talia talia got a phone call like her office so i'm i got taken to the hospital like yeah. immediately and and her office had to come back down and and was like hey um harborview medical center is on the phone they want to talk to you well harborview is where they take you if you're fucked up yeah like gunshot wound type mm-hmm. stuff um and she's like, well, this can't be good. Yeah. And so she went back up there and they're like, you need to come over here. Your, your husband's here. And, and she's like, okay, well, I'll just, I live right down the street. So I'll just go get my car. They're like, yeah, don't go home. Cause the SWAT yeah. team had the whole fucking building surrounded yeah. at that point. Okay. And so, yeah, so she came and is, this is a crazy fucking yeah. bar story that I can laugh at now. Fucking, like yeah. that time I got stabbed five times. Fucking wild, man. Yeah, that's some life experience right there. Yeah, so I went I went from that right into uh right into real estate. I had a job interview the next day and I called like it was 2 days afterwards. I called the broker who I was going to go interview with to apologize that I was going to have to reschedule um and kind of told him what had happened. He's like, "Oh my god, that was you?" And I was like, "Yeah, yeah. I just I'm I'm really sorry. I'm going to have to push this back a couple weeks." Yeah. <laughs> He's, He's like, like, dude, that's all right. Yeah. Take your time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah. after that, I had, I had no hesitancy and like quitting, quitting the job and, and, 
you know, heading out on my own, um, my insurance paid for the motorcycle. So I did end up with, I think I got more money from the insurance than I would have selling him the bike. Oh no shit. Yeah. So I had money for the school and then I had a little savings to be able to get me through my first listings until my, my checks started coming in. All right. But so you said, okay, so you fucking survive, survive, survive a wrench and a scissors, scissors. Um, then you're selling houses. Selling houses. Selling houses. How yeah. long did you do that for? I did that for, I think, three years. Is this like 06 to 09? Yeah. So did I you make any money doing that? Were you any good? I did is good. it easy selling houses? It or? was. But, and so, like, my understanding of that business is, like, selling houses, you maybe sell 12 a year. But you get, like... I think I beat the average. And the price, the the average price of houses in Seattle was pretty high. So, like, it was... So, you're getting, like, a 30K commission or so? No, not that much. It was... 20? Like, 9. 9, oh, 10, nine. 12. Okay. And so, I was averaging... So, one a month is... Yeah. Like, that's good for real great. estate. So, that's what I'm saying. 12. Yeah. But, like, you know, so I have some friends here, and they'll, like, maybe sell 10 houses a year. Yeah. But they're making 500K a year. Yeah. So I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, you just sit there and wait, and you just, like, build this fucking portfolio of houses, and then you just sit there and wait. It's, it's, it's the, like, the oh, game. money's getting tight. I better go make 30K right. next month. Or you just sort of sit around and hope, right? No, you got to hustle. You got to go meet people, and you got to turn every conversation into basically a sales pitch of, okay. do they need to buy or sell so, a house? Okay, so you had to. So, I wasn't good at that. You weren't good at the sales part. I wasn't good at the constantly finding the new leads because because yeah. the internet and 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 online marketing this was still kind of pre Facebook so so you didn't have a lot of like like running ads on social media opportunities. Right, yeah. It was literally like you go meet people in bars or through friends or at church or wherever you're at, handing and, out your fucking yeah, business handing out business, like knocking that. on doors, cold calling people, lots of cold calls. Hate that. I fucking hate it. It's just I, I am I not a natural. Who teach people to do that. It it dehumanizes people, and it just the like they're like when when I don't like it. Tra- getting trained to be a good salesperson yep. is an interesting fucking thing because the people who are coaching you are delusional. Yeah, and they think that their mission and they they think like uh, don't get me wrong, being like you can you can you can be a good salesperson totally, but the way most people try to do it is kind of like oh, oh you know they just they just manipulate words yeah they manipulate words but the intent comes from a bad place it gets a little used car salesy and you get that yeah. you get we call it commission breath when you're like yeah. when you really need to close that thing and you're just trying to figure out like what do you need yeah. to say to close mm-hmm. them and and I'm not that guy yeah what I'm I did, not either which yeah. is like our like totally. you know I think um with 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 what we have going we could be we could be doing so much better if I was that guy, mm-hmm. but I'm not that guy yeah. and I don't want to, and I'm very careful to make sure I never become that guy. Right. It's tempting, yeah, but I never want to be that no. guy. I never want to care more about the money we bring in than yeah. the people right. who are giving us their money. Right. You know, it's, it's a, yeah. it's a lot of responsibility. Totally. Just want to make sure I, it, but it's, it's, so it's, I don't like that. I could never do that. I could no. never, I, I can barely do what we do. What I learned from <laughs> doing that is that I, what I really liked about real estate was the contractual management and the, um, everything that happens behind the scenes. I did like the negotiation when you found. You're so gross to me, dude. Yeah, All these things that you like and enjoy, I'm like, I couldn't, that would like, that's I, what this, gives me anxiety. Yeah. The contractual agreement. Of yeah, I mind. loved it. Like, like I, managing yeah. timelines and making sure inspections happened at a certain time, making sure like titles is cleared and escrow is set up. All these, all these things that go into making something go from is the that beginning. A, does that fit your idea of who I am? Would I like, you know, like doing that kind of like, no, no, yeah. that's definitely not who you are. Uh, that, just hearing you talk about it gives me anxiety. Yeah. All right. So you're selling houses, selling houses. And then Oh nine or 2008 starts to happen. And, I, and uh, right up to that point, I, I was like, I was really realizing what I liked about real estate and what I didn't. And I was starting to meet like developers and I was like, these guys are the guys who have fuck you money. Like, yeah, they're building strip malls and stuff like that. That's what high rise like. apartments. Yeah. They're building mm-hmm. all kind. They're taking co- they're taking apartment buildings and converting them into condos, and then selling the condos and making a shit ton of money. Mm-hmm. Like, and and that I was like, that's what I want to learn how to do. So I had kind of stopped pursuing selling houses and and getting listings and stuff like that. And, uh, I started working as, so I'm not afraid to start at the bottom. So yeah. I got a job as an executive assistant with two different developers doing, um, 
I think like co- I get coffee and fucking do yeah. like just the bullshit. bitch work, yeah, bitch work, bitch right? Work, yeah. Because I just wanted to be in the room yeah. when they were talking about these deals, so that way I could hear how they talked about stuff and start to piece together what needed to happen oh. in order for me to go find a fourplex or a sixplex and do something like on a small scale. Yeah. And uh, and that happened at the absolute worst time because then the market crashed. Oh, and then, yeah, that's right. And then those dudes fired everybody. Oh, is this kind of what led to you going back into the... Because you went back in the army. I did. It led to a reassessment of what I wanted to do and yeah, kind of at a could... manner of convenience was yeah. just like, well, you know, <laughs> this this kind of makes sense. At the time, I was, I think, 30 years old at, at when this happened. A bunch of people in that, in like, p- people lost everything. Oh, yeah. And all the... Oh, yeah. All the... Uh, all the prior out, service turns, guys were going well, right back well, in. Well, dude, um, you know, the, that, that, what happened there? So I I was... Um, so in 07, 08, 09, you know, I had been shot and things like that. And I, yep. was, um, I was watching that unfold and paying attention. And I was like, ha, you dumb motherfuckers. Because you know what? All these, It happened because everybody was living off of debt. Dude, they everybody, were everybody, everybody just lived off of debt yeah. as if, as if I was like, Hey, and they, and like these motherfuckers are like writing shit off on their taxes oh, yeah. and just playing games with money. Yeah. It's like, you play games with money or I don't, I'm not even, I can't even remember what led to the, what, like what why, led to it. Yeah. Why, why so, the crash? So happened. what happened was like, so like if you wanted to buy a house and you had a fucking McDonald's job, if you came to me and said, Oh, and I want to I buy a house. There were mortgage guys who would say, how much money do you make? Yeah. And off of whatever you just said with no proof of income, they would give you a loan. Yeah. And, and so, so they would package all those loans together and sell them to secondary investors who buy debt uh-huh. and stuff. And so and all these kind of foreclosed at dude, once, they, it people just, stopped, like they were just bad loans. Yeah. And so people started to, f- to forfeit on stuff and then the, it just imploded and then it got bigger. And then they realized like how much of this debt all the banks were holding yeah. and they're like, you're never going to get that back. You're fucked. Yeah. And so, so then, then everything just kind of yeah. tumbled in on each other and. That's yeah. that's that's kind of the cliff notes of the yeah. way I understand mm-hmm. it, but it yeah, was. I remember bad. following that, dude. That was interesting for me because it was like I got shot in the war and I came home and America's burning. Yeah, you know, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Right, and, I, and I've always had a, I've you know, and I've um, I've never liked that way of doing business. No, like what led to that yeah. is is what I hate. Yes, you know, and so. It's just sleazy, um, but it's but but it's the way the world works, and, yeah. it, and it continues to this day in different ways, in a different like form. That. Yeah, it's yeah. just morphed into something yeah. else. Like mm-hmm. it's you know, yeah. All right, so so yeah, so I I did that and kind of at at had a I was like, all right, business is gone, <laughs> and so what do I want to do next? And at the time, I still I still had a little bit of like um, like I felt bad that I didn't deploy. Mm-hmm. Um, I felt bad that I didn't go over to Iraq when everybody else had to go. Sure. And, and I was coming up on the, you're too old to come in. Mm-hmm. And it, cause I think that was like at the time they've changed it since then, Yeah, but mm-hmm. it was like 31 or 32. And I was like, I need to either make peace with having not done that part of the military or I need to go back in. Mm-hmm. It just so happens now was a great time to go back in. Yeah. So Talia and I talked and I was like, Hey, I, I think, I think this is a great time. Show for- up with a friend. Like, Hey, y'all still got, y'all still got that buddy program. Hey, I heard yeah, yeah, y'all still that got you that guys buddy got the program. buddy program. Yeah. yeah. The refer a friend program doesn't exist. No, I, I, so I, I went and I talked to the MEPS guy and I was like, look, I want to go back in. I want to be infantry. I want to try out for special forces when, when I get in, like, I, I know you can't put me in on an yeah. 18 x-ray type of contract. Um, you know, how do we make this work? And he's like, well, here's the problem. Everybody who also got out of the army a long time ago now doesn't have any fucking money and they're coming back in. Oh. So if you want to go back in and go to, there's a like a prior service basic training that's like, super condensed geriatric basic yeah, training. Like, it's like it's, every, I don't know what stand they do. by to ice your knees, right? Ice your knees. Go <laughs> drink water. Yeah. Yeah. They had, they have something and it's, it's shorter. They don't go over like rank structure. Sure, like yeah. it's not mm-hmm. kindergarten. Yeah. He was like, there's a six month hold on, like there's a six month waiting list to get in there or, 
I can send you to basic training day one, week one, like next week. Mm -hmm. And so I, I kind of paused and I was like, you mean like actual, he's like actual <laughs> fucking. Get off the bus. Where's your fucking bag? Yes. Get to, is that your fucking bag? Line them up. Right. Is this the best way to fucking line them up? Right. What the fuck are you? What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Why do you fucking look so fucking stupid? Are you fucking lost? Why are you fucking crying? And you're just watching this shit, dude. I would love to see oh. that as like a grown ass man. So you know? I did. And like that shit, dude. So when I went to basic, that shit didn't stress me out. No. You know, I just sort of, but like people lose their shit. They cry. They lose their shit. That first yes. day, get them off the bus. Yes. Get them off the bus. The Put shark your, attack. Right, everybody throw your bags in the pile. Yes. Yeah. I mean, a lot of, I, I imagine a lot of people who are listening right now have, have been to, we, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, military. military prior service people that listen to the show. But um, if you haven't, it's just fucking funny, man. It's, it's theater. My, yeah. Yeah. It's, that's, it's, it's literally, theater. it. all it is, is they're just there to, they're just, they're, they're trying to stress you out. Yep. And, uh. Cause you got to learn to live with that. And that's funny. But, um, it's as, even as you get older, you get patience and you can yeah. really just fucking sit back and watch. Right. And they'll be like, why the fuck are you laughing? And you're just like, cause this is fucking funny. This man. is hilarious. This is funny. All right. Yep. You know, cause like this guy's what? fucking crying. Are you fucking prior service or something? Yeah. Yes, I am. Yeah. I They're am. like, Oh, yeah. seven, yeah. seven years, seven years prior. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I went and I did so, that. So I went back with to the, an 11 x-ray contract then or, uh, uh Yes. You were 11 series, right? Because I was 11 yeah. series. Yeah. I was going back in to be a Bravo. And then um, it was like a month in or two months in. They were just like, this whole class, you guys are Charlies. And that made people cry. Womp, womp, <laughs> womp, womp. So if you don't know, so here's the thing. Um, I was an 11 Bravo. Yep. Um, I was 11. That's, 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 the tif that's the typical infantry. Yep. Man. It's a rifle. 11, 11 Bravo is... Your gunslinger shit. That's what, like, you're an infantryman. You're a soldier. Yep. All right. And sometimes you'll meet a person. And they'll say, "I was in the, I was in, I was an infantryman," and then two weeks later, it comes out that they were a Charlie. Right. And they're like, "You motherfucker." It's yeah. just not the same. A lot of animosity it's just, there. It's just, it's, it's just, not. but it's just not the it's same. It's not. Charlie's so way Charlie's, harder. No, shut the and, fuck up. And uh, they put all the smart right, guys. Yeah. No, I can't. Well, so you were, you, you must have been like the golden boy because you were fucking, you were, you, you had already been trained in your real job, which was Camo. Yeah. You know, pulling radio guard. Oh, you know, use radio? <laughs> no, so the Charlie, yeah, Char 11 Charlie, Charlie's are the mortarmen. All right. So they're, they're mortarmen. So you got their, you got your, you got for it, your infantry company. Yeah. And there's, there's first platoon, second platoon, third platoon. Then there's HHC. HHC. And HHC is always just in their own fucking world, yep. man. You know, they got their, they got the, there's no rules. No, no, <laughs> they, they got their own rules, you know. There's one um, rule. Yeah. It's but, funny. Um, so I, I felt bad for our Charlies in Iraq. Yeah. They, so they really just did, secu uh, pulled security and did yeah, video guard. All my know. buddies who went over to Iraq, they said that they never saw their guns the entire time they yeah. were there. They mm -hmm. packed the cannons up and, and they just were yeah. on tower guard the whole time. Yeah. So when I was at my unit and, and it was like, uh, like we're going somewhere. Yeah. Is it going to be Afghanistan or is it going to be yeah. Iraq? Like our finger, we were just like, please let it be fucking Afghanistan yeah. because it's, it's, it's mortar. Yeah. You can shoot mortars sure, over there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, it's just, it's just a thing. It's just a thing that bothers me. I don't give a fuck, but it's just like, if you're a Charlie, say you're a Charlie. You know, it's just like this. As you meet a person, they're like, what'd like, what you do in the military? And it's like, I was a scout. I was like, sick, dude. That's, that's cool. But then, like, three weeks later, you find out they were a calf scout. I was like, it's not the same fucking thing, man. It's not the same fucking thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you, I agree, got, you agree with that, right? With the, the calf scouts? Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah, so it's the same yeah. thing, Bravos and Charlies. No, totally not. <laughs> <laughs> Just because you're, you're the calf scout to the scout. I got a fucking it. blue cord. <laughs> yeah. We're infantry. <laughs> yeah, we... Uh, uh, dude, I got a... From one of our deployments where we were under, like... Um, uh, first cab or something like that. I can't remember. We, I got an order of the spur. So technically oh, in the army, yeah. I could, I could wear the fucking cowboy hat. The Stetson. Yeah. And, yeah. and whatever else fucking shit they put out, like their boots and their yeah, they got the spurs they, they, and the Stetsons. Yeah, we, they, we got an honorary order of the, or we got the order of the spurs and yeah. we were all just like, what the fuck? Right. I mean, and that's right. a big deal like, for and, scouts. And no, yeah, but like no disrespect to it. But you know how it is in the military. You can oh, do yeah, these yeah, things, yeah. you know. You shit on whatever you can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So all right, so you go you go to basic, basic again, two again, time, two, two times. Timer. That was like Did they going, call you that in basic two time? That's what I would have called no, it. No, the hey, guy the, the drill sergeants like to point out because 
because I was the only prior service guy. Yeah. Um, and I guess the ones that they had in the, the cycle before me were just shit bags. Mm-hmm. Like they were dudes from the Navy who came back in in the army because mm-hmm. the Navy wouldn't take them. Sure. And, uh, th- when they figured out that I was actually squared away, like it, I made their life fucking easy. So they're, they, um, I think they liked me as much of a, as a drill sergeant can like somebody coming sure. back in, but they also like to point out that had I not gotten out, I'd be a fucking E eight by now Yeah. or had, or, or that I had yeah. more, they had less time. You have more time in service than me, but you're <laughs> a fucking specialist yeah. and I'm a goddamn staff sergeant. Yeah. That was, it was funny. It was like going through kindergarten again, yeah. where, you know, all the Billy rules. Madison. I know yeah. what ex- yeah. Billy Madison. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It was like Billy Madison. Rizzuto in yep. perfect cursive. <laughs> all right. So I did that and then went to airborne school straight out of there. And then, uh, I that's, was on, that's right. I forget that about you. Yeah. I went you to just use the five jumps, five jumps. That's so, it. Yeah. I was on but orders. That's still cool. You know? yeah, yeah. It was rad. I'm, I'm yeah. glad I went. It was a it was a definite bucket list thing that I wanted to. That's where I read the book. Um, is it called In the Company of Heroes? Yeah, I think so. Or no, shit, fuck, no, no. That's that's when I read that. That's when I where I read Band of Brothers. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. The, like the history of the Airborne World yep. War Two and things like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I for- watched the movie. I didn't read the book. Yeah, I forget what the. But I also read In the Company of Heroes, but that was um that was the Black Hawk Down. Mm-hmm. Um, that was written by the pilot. Yeah, yep. I can't remember his name. Those are good books. Yeah, yep. no, that was everyone's school was cool because it was, it was like it was like it was you're in a school, but like it's a lot more downtime. A lot of downtime. Yeah, I was actually I was I was pissed, man. So I went I, I graduated basic training, you know, and then um, I was I was going to airborne school. We all know we all right. knew I was going to airborne school, and then I was gonna go to go to airborne school with the people you graduated basic training with, right. you know. Right, which so every, we everybody's yep. getting on the bus, and they're and like, but my unit are like, I, we're not in control of anything. Nope. My unit lost my medical records. Oh shit! So I was like, what the? F-? So literally every like the basic training graduate, as you get on the bus yeah. right at the after the graduation ceremony, right? Um, everybody left, and they're like. Uh, Why uh, what the f- uh, they're like shit so I had to go <laughs> I can't remember how long it was but I think it was like two weeks where I lived it, you know it was like the on Sand Hill whatever where we went to it's like a training. holdover yeah but I went to this specific barracks um, where it was everybody else there was somebody who quit basic training for oh, bullshit reasons. Yes. So that's where like I where was. Where all the shit bags mm-hmm. go. Who, yeah, uh-huh. just these fucking turds. Yep. And so so actually, so like these, and there was, you know, like a somebody in charge of that fucking unit there, whatever. And uh, I, I don't remember. I think, I think basically my instructions were like, hey, don't fucking cause trouble. And that's it. Yeah. And we're like, we'll just you, like, because you're, you're, you're on. Just, you're, you're just waiting for the next class. Yeah. You're, you're just waiting. Don't yep. fucking cause trouble. And that's it. And so, but all these other guys, like they're, you know, they're, um, making them clean oh, the yeah. latrine and all this stuff. And I could just kind of walk around. I went to the PX and right. stuff like that, yep. you know, but it was stupid because they wouldn't let me work out. They still, oh. yeah, you know, they, they, they don't let you, uh, they don't want you to get hurt yeah, mm-hmm. and then be a medical hold on property. Yeah, yeah. I'm property. But no, I was, I was, um, so I was, you know, it was two weeks of listening to these motherfuckers talk and tell their stories of bitch and moan. Yeah. And so it was just, yeah, it was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, I went, Fuck to, that. went to, yeah, I went to airborne school and it actually like pushed my airborne school back a few weeks. So I was, it was like, it was cold, man. Like it was hottest. We went in the, I went in the hottest month. So if I, I showed up to base, I showed up to hold i left june 20th I th- so july august september october i went i went in airborne school like november yeah oh i showed up to the 82nd on thanksgiving okay yeah that was the that was a mistake because they're like hey welcome um you're on cq for Guess the next what? three days staff like, duty is your life like, i was like what's cq they're like <laughs> 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 you like to read boy <laughs> Do you like, like movies I was like not really but yeah <laughs> so i just sat there i for real that's how i showed up to my unit i fucking drove from minnesota to fort bragg north carolina yeah just fucking landed and they're like cq i was like ah oh, all right <laughs> the worst yeah. so when yeah. I went back in, I had totally forgotten. I was all fired up. I'm like, yeah, fucking you back in the army. The shit. I forgot about fire guard. I forgot about staff duty. I forgot mm-hmm. about all the stupid shit. And then when it like the when they slowly started coming back into my life, I was like, oh fuck, oh, dicks, God oh, dicks. Damn it. But there's a lot of there's uh, yeah a lot of yeah there's 
There's dumb shit, but there's, there's dumb shit everywhere. There's dumb shit, like, exactly. It's definitely worth it, yep. you know? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Some people make the mistake and put too much importance on that dumb shit, and then they regret that when they get out. Totally. I they, love they, the they're game. So, they're so fixated on the shitty things. Yeah. Like, they're, they're just the dumb things of the military. Yep. They're so focused on that. You got to just laugh at it. And then they fucking get out, and then they miss all the good things, and they didn't appreciate them right. when they were there. It's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Looking back, the only thing I regret, I wish I would have taken more pictures. Like that's the only thing I wish I would have done different. Uh, dude, I, uh, I have, I have the, I, I, I'm not, I, I don't have many pictures from yeah, back then. I wish um, I had but more. Dude, I have a great one. I jumped out of an airplane and took a selfie with a Kodak disposable camera. Nice. Yeah. And it was on like a full, it was a, it was a, you know, I was in the 82nd. So it was a full, it was a full combat night jump, you yeah. know? And, uh, I thought, I thought it was like, I thought it was a good idea. You know, I was like, it's going to, it's going to, it's going to impress the fuck out of these bitches that don't like me. This is gonna you know? Great. Yeah. yeah. No, but I fucking, so I pulled the, so I jumped out, shoot opens, <laughs> grab my fucking, uh, Kodak disposable camera from yeah. my cargo pocket, aim it at my face. And instantly I was like, mistake, <laughs> blind, blind, <laughs> blind as a motherfucker. And I don't fucking see shit all the way to the fucking ground. Right. You just kind of, kind of got to listen because you can hear oh, yeah. people flop. And I forget. So you're in airborne school. Do you do a fucking, I forget what the jumps are in airborne school. It's like daytime Hollywood. And, and if you're listening, you've never been to airborne school. Day, uh, the jumps are like daytime, nighttime. We call no gear Hollywood. Right. And then you just got your jumps. Um, so did, did you jump? Do did you jump rucksacks? We did and rucksacks. I don't were, remember. Was the first one Hollywood or no? Did, was there a night jump? Our order was all fucked up because we had we had a lot of wind advisories, and so our schedule, our jump schedule, kept mm. getting moved around. Yeah. Did you fall asleep in the shoot shed? No, that was the hardest part of airborne I, school, dude. I got so I got smoked once in the shoot shed. I didn't fall asleep. I got smoked for laughing. I fucking couldn't control it. I just, I was just laughing hysterically, dude. But here's what's up. You know the fucking BCGs, the the military glasses. Oh, yeah. I had a pair. They're fu- oh really? Jesus Christ! All right, so uh, they magnify. So these are the glasses that the army issues people. And directly across from me was this dude, and he was trying to stay awake, uh-huh. but he couldn't. And his BCGs were just magnifying those like. So there was his so- eyes were like going crooked <laughs> and he's trying to fight it. And his, and I was just, I was just, I fucking lost my shit and I started laughing and I got smoked <laughs> for laughing. Cause you can't you, like in airborne school, I, I forget about that, but you just literally just fucking sit there. Yeah. Waiting to get yeah, with all your shit on PCI yeah. and, and, and you, you can spend like seven, eight hours in there that day. Yeah. Right? It's a long time. It's a long time. Yeah. All right. So you graduate airborne school, airborne school. And then I linked up with, uh, with my unit. After that, I was in. Uh, so first ID was stationed down in Texas, but they were coming back off of a deployment to the Korangal in Afghanistan, um, which is like fucking nastiest part of Afghanistan. Mm-hmm. Um, that's where the movie Restrepo was filmed. Okay. Um, so they were coming back out of that place. I can't remember if I've seen that movie or not. It's a good movie. Um, it's like documentary style of the. I think it was one seventy third went. And then my unit had relieved 173rd when they filmed that thing. Okay. So they were they were moving they were coming back into Texas and then they were moving the unit from Texas up to Fort Knox, Kentucky. And so I was meeting up with them during that during them standing up that unit. So I was with 126 Infantry over uh, as part of First ID up in Fort Knox. All right. Yep. So, so you when, show up there in like 2010 or so something like yeah, that. Yeah, t- t- 2000 2010 and then we stood the unit up and and i went to a shitload of schools and um i was i went to a lot of schools like, like for what so you're a you're a mortarman as a mortarman so i went to uh MLOC, which is uh infantry mortar leaders course um okay. learning how to be the fdc to to be able to run all the guns um and and do the computers and stuff to calculate okay. all that shit yeah. then i went to air assault school um, Wait, don't you have to be good at math <laughs> To be I, a motorman, I was good at math. You were, you're oh, awful now, dude. It, you're, like you're awful. I try to talk to you about like, yeah. hey man, if it's like twenty percent of a hundred, you're like, stop, stop, stop. I'm like, yeah. okay, yeah. I used to be okay. able, I used to be able to do algebra and shit in my head. Really? I lost, I lost that from the ID. Like yeah. math just disappeared. Really? Yeah. All right. It's crazy. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So okay. So and so you got. So you ended up getting blown up in Afghanistan. Yeah. That was, but that was 2014, right? That's 2011. So oh so, no shit. Yeah, 2011. 
Um, we deployed. So I probably got there some like summer of 2009, um, July, 2009. And then we left at the end of 2010. Cause, cause we, we, I think we deployed in December, 2010. So, right. so we had gotten there in winter. Went to Afghanistan. Yeah, went to Afghanistan okay. in the winter. Um, and the passes are all frozen. We were in Coast Province, um, which is kind of right on the border with Pakistan. And um, they shut down for the winter. Like they, they, the passes freeze and they stop coming over the mountains. And so okay. that's kind of like the slow season. Yeah. And then when spring happens and the passes thaw out, that's yeah. when fighting season starts. Mm-hmm. And so it started, kinetic, like it starts picking up. Yeah. And more ID, IDs and, yeah. and ambushes and stuff. And so... Uh, we got there, we, I was out at Cop Terrazai, which, um, kind of out, out near the border. And then we had this other, so we had Cop Terrazai, which was, which was sparse, but like, we still had like, like piss tubes and, and shitters and stuff like that. Were you stirring shit over there? Uh, I didn't have to, we wag bagged everything and then we would go throw the bags in a giant, massive, constantly on fire burn pit okay, that was right yeah. next to our cop that yeah. which was super fucking great to breathe all that yeah. all the time. Yeah. And Dude, uh, I, I had some fun with burn pits. So actually in, in our, in our deployment in Talifar, yeah. um, we were living in, um, you know, I, I forget how the battalion was spread out throughout the city, but yeah. I know that I know my company was living in a school. Okay. But I think we had to turn the school over for some reason, you know? Yep. And so what we did is we, like, there's, like, outskirt city blocks, kind yeah. of. You got, like, the main city and then sort of, you know, so, like, there was this little, call it a neighborhood. It was, like, five or six houses. And we just, like, took that. And okay. the people lived there. But they worked out some deal. It was, like, right. a money exchange, right, you know? Right. And, like, we sort of rented. Pay a or made, money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, like, so we were living in this this type of compound. But there was no there was no walls. It's like right. we had houses, you know? And it was, like, open desert behind us and shit. So it was, it was interesting. But there was a burn pit. And uh, I don't, we, we missed, I, me particularly. I really, I've always liked to burn things. Yeah. And I, like making fires and yeah. stuff like that. We, there was one time in part. So like I was playing with Molotov cocktails yeah, and all this shit. Like this is just our downtime. Like we're patrolling right. the streets and doing night raids and night patrols and stuff like yeah. that. But you got to do something with your time over there. Do you ever play with the cheese charges from the mortars? Did they ever give you those? No. So oh, I don't even, you, I, I never saw our them. Charlie's. I, li- I literally never saw our Charlie's on okay. deployment. Um, <laughs> we don't know what they did. <laughs> yeah. Well, they did radio guard, dude. Yeah. Um, uh, but um, uh, we had this huge burn pit, you yeah. know, and one time, like, and we were just like, you know, like, hey, let's start a fire. Okay, cool. You know, it was like, one time I was like, <laughs> want to start a real fire? You want to start like a Pour real a one? shit ton of JP8 in that yeah. motherfucker and then had a little JP8 trail. Right. You know, fucking lit it on fire and it was so big. It, like the CEO <laughs> came over the radio, like, "What the fuck was that? What the fuck is that? <laughs> yeah, or like, just burning the, the dunnage? That? Yeah, <laughs> we're mm-hmm. just getting, yeah, getting rid of old uniforms. Yeah, we did a lot, dude. We, I did some fucking, I did some interesting things on deployment to yeah. stay, to stay busy and occupied. Right. Hey, you want to go yeah. light a fire? Is like the funniest mm-hmm. thing I've heard yeah. in a while. Well, dude, yeah. <laughs> well, here's so here's so here's here's so on that. I oh uh, shit, was it that? It was that deployment. It, it was that deployment. So, like, when we were living in the school, yeah. the scouts platoon, and these are actual scouts, not Cav scouts. Right. Um, they were living, like, I don't know, a quarter mile away from us in a in a private building, you know, okay. like, like a house, you know. Right. And so, like, they had different rules. Yeah. So, they would just, like, sunbathe up yeah. on their rooftop and shit like that. So, I was like, <laughs> fuck these motherfuckers. Right. I grabbed uh, some surgical tube, some duct tape. Um some cardboard. Okay. I made a three man slingshot. Nice. I made a three man slingshot. And so, um, we would go to the roof and it was like the real deal slingshot. This motherfucker worked, dude. Right. And like, we, like the, we, you know, we would get MREs, but then sometimes we'd get like fresh fruit. Mm-hmm. So like tangerines. Yep. I would take a tangerine. I'd put a packet of salad dressing on it. I'd tape it really tight and I'd launch that motherfucker <laughs> over. And it's just like, <laughs> You know, so like, you know, that's, that's what I was doing. And then like, we would do it at night. And one time I, I like, we, we were just, we were just having fun, dude. I put, um, 
I would cut open IR chem lights. Yeah. And I would pour that juice all over the tangerine and fucking launch it in the air. Right. Over at their house, you know? And like one time some helicopters call it, or like somebody call it in. They're like, what the fuck is that? What the fuck? Is that a rocket? It's not a rocket. It's it's time to go downstairs. (laughs) You know? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. This is just like the fun things you do on deployment. But we were stirring shit. Yeah, I didn't know I was during during the army and stir shit. No, and if and if you haven't stirred shit in the uh, military, uh, it's good. It's it's good for you. It's character it's, building. It's, it's good training. Yeah. yeah, you can tell who stirred shit and who mm-hmm. hasn't stirred shit. We you we really did. you really can. Yeah. you can tell who has stirred shit and who hasn't. There's a couple. Mm-hmm. There's a couple tasks that have to happen to like just make life work. When you're when you're in an environment like that, mm-hmm. that you just don't ever think about you ever having to do, mm-hmm. you're, and you get you 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 grow a lot of patience though. You do because yeah. you're like because you're like okay, this does have to be done. Yeah, I am not the highest ranking person here, mm-hmm. so this is yeah. definitely coming down on my shoulders. It's like I know shit. how the yeah. game is played, mm-hmm. but it was it was Some nice by my shit. by my second deployment. I was um, a gun team leader. Okay, so not like a respected rifle team leader right but a gun team leader right you know so i would still i wouldn't I, I didn't have to stir shit as much right as my rank typically would right but i still stirred the shit sometimes yeah so uh all right so you're in afghanistan afghanistan and pooping so we in bags yeah pooping burning. bags burning them we it had, sounds like more work than just shitting and burning shit making the private burn shit i for, i don't yeah dude, i can't you know <laughs> pooping in bags is weird yeah, dude i'm like we we had we in this in our in our cop we somebody built an outhouse out of wood uh-huh. and there was the two uh barrels underneath yes. but they were exposed and so was like maybe you know eight inches so and just like <laughs> I've, I've i've seen somebody have diarrhea oh. <laughs> <laughs> And of all the things that I've fucking forgotten and I didn't visually store, I I can vividly, vividly see this guy's fucking diary. His name was Sergeant Curran, and he was a skinny motherfucker. And it was just like a stream of poop. He had a stomachache yeah. that day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I didn't have to do that. We, we uh, shit in bags. And then there was a pile. There was like a collection point for the bags of shit. Was that common in Afghanistan? Because I've never... Wag re- bags? Yeah. I've never really... I, n- I never experienced that or heard of it even All the much. dudes who had gone on the deployment before me said like it was par for the course. Like mm-hmm. like that was just... That's what they did at the other place. Then, mm-hmm. But they also like had shit burning stories. Store, uh, stories. I don't know why... I don't know why we didn't. I think... So we had two... We had two cops. So we had Cop Terzai, which um, which I think was next to like a little bizarre, like mm-hmm. tiny little town. Mm-hmm. Um, it was remote, but it wasn't like really remote. And then we had this other place called Chirgata, um, that was that was more remote. And and it was so shitty that we would rotate out. We'd send a platoon there mm-hmm. for like 15, 20 days, and then everyone had to share the brunt of being out at that place. And, and that was right next to an old madrasa, which is like a r- religious school where they had been cutting dudes heads off. And oh, so okay. they built, um, they built this ANA post and then they had Chirgata, the cop, like where the Americans stayed right next to it. Mm-hmm. And so it was kind of like a dual manned. Sure. What was your, what was your mission over there? Just stop people from coming over the border. Yeah. Stop. Essentially. I, I think so. Stop the flood in. Yep. Okay. So forced yeah. presence Ty- type of stuff. Typical deployment type thing. Yeah. But then, um, Lots of patrols. Yeah. But then you got, so you were patrolling. Yeah. As a Charlie. So, so I like Humvee security or something like that. Or no, like, we humped, uh, the 60 millimeter. Oh, really? So, cause over there you kind of like use that. Oh really? yeah. 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 So we would dismount the 60 with, with all the patrols and then the, the 120 would stay up at Terra's eye. And then we had an 81 and a 60 at, cop Trigata. And so if the guys were going out for like a close patrol, we'd stay on the big gun mm-hmm. and, and just man the gun while they were outside the wire. But if we were going, um, like we would go up to the border checkpoints, uh, BSP six was, was kind of the, the checkpoint on the fucking border with Pakistan. Mm-hmm. And so it was outside the range of our guns. And so when we would go to missions like Bring that, smaller guns out we'd there. take the fucking yeah. 60 and, right. and set that up. Yeah. So, 
And this is this was this was was, this was one deployment. Yeah. And you just fucking so, yeah. but you got blown up. I got blown up. How'd, on, you, how'd you how'd you do that? So we were we were doing an exchange between um Chirgata and Terzai. And so um when we would when we would do that so so this was April is when I got hit and and it was April um, 2014. April 2011. Oh okay, sorry. Yeah, yep. all right. Yeah. April 2011 and and I think we had just had somebody get blown up uh the week before and we had we had the uh the Mat Vs and the um the MRAPs. Those are big up armored big up armored yeah. V-shape hole. Um so that's what you were in? When that's you what got, I was in. Really? Okay. Um and so we had somebody who got hit the week before about like the week or week and a half before. And then I was the second patrol in our unit to like take casualties. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we, uh, we had route clearance with the engineers who would drive those Buffalo. Fucking yeah. Things. Oh, I remember. Yeah. Oh, those guys were fucking wild, They're man. Nuts, dude. Like when we would, uh, we would see them sometimes and, 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 and escort them places. And they would brag about how many times their truck been hit. Be yeah. Like, this baby's been hit 27 been times. blown up nine yeah, times. 27 like, times. Fuck. It's like, fuck, dude. Been back then, we didn't care about the noggin. Right. You know? It's like, hey, yeah, maybe your truck's still good, but dude. maybe maybe we're not. How's I don't the, know. How's the thinking? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How's your brain yeah. working? <laughs> yeah. I got blown up once, and it rocked me, dude. I can't imagine these guys who've been hit three, four, five, so you, six, you got, seven, eight times. You guys, your your truck got hit by an ID. Yeah, we was we there had a small arms fire after that. It was just just I don't remember um, that adrenaline thing. Yeah. I don't think there was small arms fire because I remember I remember air being on station like really fast. Mm-hmm. So we got hit. I was the I was the second to last Humvee. It was a command debt ID. So there was a mm-hmm. wire up to a position on the hill. Um, that they found, oh no, it was, a, it was, no, it was a command debt. I can't remember. If, it was a command debt. Um, because they picked our Humvee because we had all been, you drive in the tire tracks that mm-hmm. the person in front of you is driving on. So mm-hmm. if it was a pressure plate, it would have been the first truck. Sure, yeah. Um, we had route clearance go and clear the road, but, but then we had too much time in between when they left and when we rolled out behind them because we didn't all roll out at the same time. Mm. And so in between the engineers going out and then us rolling out, somebody had come and hooked up the ID and yeah. and and did that. So we were the second to last Humvee and and um yeah, got got hit and it lifted us our 25 ton vehicle up like 5 or 6 feet and set us over on the side and we were on fire. Um which is why we um, egressed out of the vehicle. Otherwise, you stay in the vehicle, and the guy behind you pushes pushes mm-hmm. you out of the way. Yeah. Um, so was it a full? So were you driving? Were you? TC? I was in the back. So it was so, okay. the one that looks like a big ass SUV, and it has a hatch that pulls that goes down in the back. So okay. it's like six or eight dudes in the back, plus a driver and TC and a gunner. Oh, okay. So we were rolling with the the heavy weapon squad. So we had a shitload of fucking ammo. Oh yeah, okay. We had so much stuff inside that yeah. vehicle. So we're on fire. And um uh, everybody survived everybody Everyone alive. lived. Okay. Um I think that our driver eventually ended up losing his leg. Um and then er- the rest of us kind of all had cookie cut like cookie cutter mm-hmm. upper spine lower spine injuries and yeah. and brain injuries. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, so we got out of the truck. I remember the helicopters being there real quick. We were I ran back to the truck to like get the machine gun and and try and save I was trying to save dude's gear, right? Like cuz <laughs> that made sense to me at the time was yeah. to like get the shit off the burning vehicle and I didn't know. <laughs> this is just a funny little memory I'm just having right now. They ratchet strapped all the backpacks to the side, right? So that way, if you ever have to like get the gear, you cut the ratchet strap, and all the bags fall down to the ground. Okay. And then the bag, then then you have. I didn't know that. Oh. So I went up there with my knife and I cut everybody's fucking backpacks at the straps. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your backpack, guys. Here's your fucking worthless. It's, it's handheld bag now. Of stuff. Yeah. Your uh. briefcase. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally fucked that up for them. Sorry, mm-hmm. guys. Mm-hmm. But uh, but yeah, we got um we got medevaced out and then um I think I don't think I passed out, but by the time we got to um 
it wasn't terrors. I was whatever the next big, big cop there is, uh, where the combat medic station, mm -hmm. I couldn't feel my feet. I couldn't, I couldn't. Oh, they, they might've backed you out there. Like, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so yeah. they came out. Um, I think they took the driver. Just you, the helicopters came to get you guys. Or, yeah, yeah. So okay, we had yeah. I, that picture sure. that I have of the burning. Of, that's you took that on the helicopter or something. No, or they did. They did. Okay. The the guy pulling security for the medevac mm -hmm. took that picture and then came and checked on us and and printed out copies and gave us that. So okay. I think did I? You know what? There was um, I had I was in possession of a picture one time of the door that I got shot in, and oh, but I really? can't fucking for the life of me. It was on a laptop, and I never saved it, and I don't think my buddy had it either. Yeah, but you could see like the bullet holes just fucking lined da, 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 up da, 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 the door. Da, da, da. Yeah, yeah, of the door that I, I was going through. I wish I had that. Uh, yep, picture still. You know, yeah, but I, I don't. I think it's gone forever. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. sucks. Those but you, pictures but you are. Got your, you got your picture. I got yeah. my picture. It's a picture. I think it's. Uh, I think based on where gear is and where guys are, I think it's literally a picture of me getting loaded up onto the the medevac to to get taken out there. That's cool. Yep. That's cool. So when I got a, back I'm I take a pee break. A pee can break. I, can I take a two minute yeah, pee break? And then we'll get back. All right, we're back. I had to pee. I had to pee. But like to be honest, that was pretty good. That was a good long run. Hour yeah. forty five minutes. It's probably one of your top times for right. making it without a pee. Yeah, thank yeah, thank good you. Job. Well, no, good like job. I, I I pee a lot when I drink. When you make fun of me about peeing, it's like, well, dude, I just <laughs> in this in this last hour while you're sitting there <laughs> sipping on your fucking tea, I've had nine modellos. That's right. Okay. You know, so yeah. All right. So you're you're blown up, you're medevaced. Medevaced. Went back to uh we went to Longstool first. Um, they kept testing me like, uh, like where they stab your feet and I was not reacting the, okay. the way you're supposed to. So, so like, I think almost all the guys in my truck ended up going right back to the line. And then because I couldn't pass the, the fucking needle to your feet test, I went to long stool and then from long stool to, uh, back to, um, Kentucky. And so that whole trip took about. <laughs> Sounds like you're saying long stool. Isn't that it, how you say I it? I think it's I think it's long stool. Long stool. Like L A N D. Long, I think, okay. I, I, yeah, you're like long. I went to long stool. Long stool. The total fucking. <laughs> you, got a, you got a long stool. Long I don't know. Stool. I think it's long like long stool. Long stool. Long stool. Yeah. Yep. So I went there. Mm -hmm. I don't remember much of that. Uh, it was there for I think like a week. Yeah, I flew into there. Just I think, real quick. isn't that where everyone goes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. out? Well, that's dude. That's where I um. I woke up there. I didn't think I was injured that badly. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't think I was going to leave the country, you know, right. and I woke up. And actually, it was a, like a pretty cool story. I have the coin out there. Uh, I woke up, and I was like, what the fuck's going on? And anyways, I, I don't know what, but um, I was in the room with um, some some other guy. He was a captain, Army. Um, I don't, I, he gave me his, that was the first time I got a coin. Nice. He gave me his coin. Like here, dude. Yeah. Here, bro. Yeah. And we were we were both only awake for like ten minutes a day. Yeah. They don't keep you awake much Ooh. over there, I don't think. You no. know? Yeah. And a yeah. lot of drugs. So but then but then yeah, but then my flight to the United States, I didn't have any fucking drugs. They fucked that shit up. Oh, I was they dope. Fucked up. It. Dude, I was I was fucking I was it was a it was a tough flight. I was, I was I was on that medevac motherfucking C seventeen. Yeah, and like I just like across from me, I can remember is like motherfucking burn victims. Yeah, and they got the plastic drapes over them. Yeah, and all their fucking sh and all and like so I'm just sitting there awake the whole time, and all these dudes who are asleep are just like, Aah. that was probably me. You know, just like moaning in pain and yeah. shit like that. And uh, it was actually it was it was it was weird because it's like. You're, you know, you're in line to get on the bird, which means your bed is in a, a row. And, right. they, and they're looking at my paperwork and they're like, where's your meds? And I was like, I'm sorry, I forgot. I am him. not, I am not in, in, in charge of me right now. Yep. And I was like, I don't know. What the fuck? Yeah. I, you know, I was on an IV drip the on the way yeah. back. So like somebody did push me some morphine a little bit, but yep. it was kind of like a. Uh, we got some stuff here. We'll take. So right. that was that was brutal, dude. And then so I landed in uh, DC after that. It was fucking awful. Yeah. And so when I when I got to uh, Andrews Air Force Base in DC, they uh, decided to send me down to uh, Womack back at Fort Bragg. Okay. But it was I took an ambulance. Oh. 
But those ambulances You're bouncing around. Yeah, but so like I had no that meds. Shot, but no, this is this is where it gets better. So I had no meds on my flight over, but on that drive down, the fucking guy in the back with me. Yeah, it, there was like there was a civilian ambulance, you know, and he was like, "Hey, dude, they gave us like way more drugs than you could ever need, but." You're allowed to have them, so if you want them, just tell me, and yes. I'll just like, l- like fuck me up, dude. Like so, Let's he, yeah, go. yeah. He made that. It was like an eight-hour ride, I think. I don't remember. Fuck all, except that interaction. Wow. <laughs> yeah, but then I got to Womack, and they're like, "Nope, you're too fucked up. Go back to Walter Reed." So, anyways, that was just a little sub story. Yeah, that's I, funny. Yeah. So yeah, I was. I remember. I remember a little bit of the plane ride over. I remember being like on the stacked you get stretchers. Stacked, yeah. And, and, and when I, you get here, so like you take the C 17 over, but then the, you like, so I was in a C 130. Yeah. Back. So after, after that ambulance drive down, I was on a C 130 back up, but we took detours. <laughs> you had to drop off. Yeah. Had, we have stops Different, to make. Dude, for real. That's how it worked. Fuck. And that was in a C 130. Yeah. And so you're, you're packed. Super tight. Were you on a stretcher still, or were yeah. you sitting? Okay. There was and there was three to a fucking row, yeah. and it was just packed deep. You know, it's weird. weird. Remember, we had on the on the on the plane ride over there. I yeah, I I think that I had a really hot like nurse. I vaguely remember trying to like hook her up with my friend Jim. That's how much of a good friend I am. <laughs> is that this girl was so hot working on there? She's a nurse. Yeah. I think she's a lieutenant colonel. But I was just like, you've got to meet my boy. Ah, <laughs> just fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> so, so in the end, what, what like long lasting injuries you got from, you got a brain, brain injury, um, which, which those, me. those are weird. Cause those don't, those take a couple weeks to set in. Yeah. And so by the time I got to Kentucky was when that was really starting to sink its teeth into like my life. And so huge problem with short term memory. I was retarded when I came back, like mm. just, there's no other way to, to describe it other than that. I had, um, my equilibrium or my, I had really bad vertigo. So I'd like fall out of a chair. I would hate that. Oh, I would hate it was, that it's fucking, the fucking worse. Like yeah. all of a sudden up feels like it's a different way. So you go to correct and, mm. and you fall. I couldn't remember, couldn't remember shit. Um, couldn't concentrate on anything more than like, what's the treatment like that? What's the, what, what can you do for recovery? So there? there's lots of occupational therapy. So I was at the wounded warrior battalion, the, the WTB for like two and a half years. No shit. Yeah. Fuck that. Yeah. It, and like, they kept having to extend my contract in order to continue doing the therapy. Yeah. That's a really, um, in my experience anyways, and it was a long time ago, I stayed the fuck away from that crowd as the much WTB? as possible. Yeah. yeah. And like, cause in, 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 and, um, or I just stayed away from that crowd. We I'll had two that. distinct groups in the WTB. There mm-hmm. were guys who got fucked up on deployment, like from getting shot and or getting blown up. Majority then, of them did not. And then we had, so like if there was one platoon of guys who were all combat wounded, then there were three platoons of people who rolled their ankle playing basketball or yeah. were just trying to like get out <clears throat> yeah. on medical. So here's, here's the, yeah, dude. So, but at least you were, um, um, they kept you close. Yeah. You know what yeah. they, what they did to me, I don't think was a good plan. It was like, um, so I, I did five or six months inpatient at Walter Reed. Okay. And then um, they kind of exhausted their surgeries there and they right. weren't working, but I needed to go home and heal. Yep. So I just had to heal. Yeah. Or I, but I was still in the army. Right. But instead of sending me to North Carolina, to Fort Bragg, where right. I was stationed, they sent me to St. Paul, Minnesota. Okay. And did I, you do it at home? I lived in my parents' house. Nice. Yeah. But I don't know, dude. I was disconnected. That wasn't my, that's not mm, where I lived. That's yeah. not where my life was. You're right. And, you know, you and I'm like living in my parents' basement with that fucking shit. Yeah. You know, like my parents are like, my parents are awesome. That, right. But it's, it's different. Like, yeah. And it's just sitting there by myself. So, really, I had family, but they were not like, that wasn't my life anymore. Right. You know? And uh, so I, was, I sat there. I, I, I think it was like January to June. Uh, June was my next big surgery. And so I was remote. Yeah. The WTB, it was like a regional thing. Yes. And so I was being like, my, my unit was stationed in like somewhere like quad cities, Indiana type shit or something yeah. like that. You okay. Know? And nobody was fucking combat wounded. Right. Nobody. Right. And I was like, fuck. I'm, and so they're like, and it was just weird. So they, for accountability, yeah, they made me, um, they assigned me to this aviation unit in the national guard. And there's a aviation unit in St. Paul. Right. And they, they are putting me in supply. 
Right. And I was at E5 coming from the 82nd Airborne Division, and I'm showing up, and I like, I walk. I can walk standing up now, but I have to walk with a cane and shit like that. And the first right. day I walk in, and uh, the, somebody was like, oh, okay, what do you know about aviation? I was like, how to jump out? Right. I was like, I don't, you know, and I walk into this. They're like, yeah, you're going to be in supply. And I'm like, man, fuck this. Fuck you. You know, um, I walk in and there's an E4 female. She's like, are you Derek? And I was like, I'm out of here. I'm fucking <laughs> Am I here, Derek? Dude. Yeah. I'm fucking like, Sergeant Wida. Right. Like, maybe. And I get it. And I'm not like, I'm not one of those like by the book assholes or something. Right. Like that. But upon but first interaction, it's like, I'm not Derek to you. No. I, you know. So that was, yeah, so the... With, different world. So it, it was different. I think I think that was a stupid thing. I, I agree. And then, so I wasn't going to that unit or checking in. It was super, mm-hmm. you know, and it was just like... Um, but, but also, why would I? That was a miserable place to put me right. in, you know? Like, I... What the fuck? Yeah. That was a stupid fucking plan. Yeah. And obviously, I didn't do very well. Right. <laughs> you know? And then and so there's guys... <laughs> that happens to a lot of guys. And then yeah. they end up getting in trouble with, like, UCM and, UCMJ for not showing up to formations and yeah. stuff. And they're like, why... We don't understand why you're not just showing up. And yeah. It's like because you, what are you yeah. serious? You don't I, understand. I had a really, dude, I had a really good case manager though. Um, uh, I did. You know, one night I wound up uh, in the in the drunk tank at the VA. This was after after between you know when they told me that I was getting medically retired. That was. Did you medically retire? Yeah, I medically after, retired. Yeah, okay. after two. Uh, that was the two and a half year process. Was going through the occupational therapy and physical therapy, and doing. Did you know you were on your way out the whole time, pretty much, and you're just trying to. I, they were doing their part to get you. I knew it pretty quick, so they moved me from the WTB in Kentucky to the WTB out of Joint Base Lewis McCord because my family's from Seattle. So they were like, Hey, we have a WTB, Mm -hmm. you know, we're just, we're going to, you guys are going to PCS over there and then you'll go through this process over there. And then I think about five, six months after I got there, they, um, my contract was, was ending. So they're like, Hey, we're going to extend you. So that way we can retire you. And then, and then you'll, you'll retire. And they switched it from when I got hurt from, from when you got hurt they do the uh, the VA and the the Army retirement at the same time. So you you retire from the Army and in process the VA all in one thing. Yeah, I think what they were doing, like around you or even before, was that you out process the Army and then get like tossed over to the VA and have to in process. Dude, and- it was super weird for me. So it was like, um, and and I want to move on, but I'll just say this: like when I was so from. I was I was in Minnesota from like January 2008. Yeah. And I retired in like uh June 2009. So for that 18 months I was in Minnesota. I was active duty army. Right. And the army was telling me to go to the VA and the VA was saying, "Yep, I'm a veteran. I can't be seen there." Yeah. And it's just this fucking it's, fuck you yep. bunch of bullshit. Bullshit yeah. circle of All right. So, yeah. yeah. All right. So you did that. So you, did that. You, you did the deployment thing. You got blown up. Got blown up. Seems retired. Like, seems like yeah. So and then now, now it's that was you know several years ago. I think now it's migraines and yeah, I back, get back long lasting back issues or neck and back, and then I get like three, three sometimes four migraines a week now. Yeah. All right. Well. Yeah. yeah. Fucking. Hey. It is yeah. what it is, right? Yeah. All right. So <laughs> you, you retire in uh, twenty fourteen. Thirteen. I 13. got out, and then we moved to uh, we moved. We moved to Central Washington. I had a friend who was moving his family from downtown Seattle back out to the country where he grew up. Mm-hmm. So we just kind of followed them. They were longtime friends. Yeah. Um, they were in family building mode, and and Talia was pregnant with our first uh, our first kid. Yeah. And so we were like, "Cool, country sounds good." Yeah. We have no clue what we'd do if we went back to downtown. But so because you're Owen, you're like, yeah. not only are we going to move to the country, we're going to fucking we are farmers. We're now. going to be a farmer. Yeah. So yeah. you you so you start a farm. We did business. So it's fu- so the farming came from. I started gardening when I was at the WTB as like a, as like a therapy thing. Like yeah. there's real connection and grounding that happens when you're like planting stuff and it's growing. Yeah. So we had, I used to enjoy that too, but you know what I, I love fucking it, hate now. Huh. Bending over, ah, uh, yeah, and getting down on my knee. I did planter boxes, so everything <laughs> yeah. was raised. I think about that doing here, or actually, you know, like Stacy, um, and I don't want like this is our private business, but, but we don't have made it. Like we talk about living somewhere else yeah. where there's more earth. Yeah, I miss, uh, I miss earth. Like where there's you can, no where earth you can in plant Vegas. Some shit, you yeah. know. Yeah, 
Okay, so yeah. so you're doing the farm thing. So we did farm thing. We grew. We started with uh, we we had the 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 five or six chickens, and then like a I had a an aquaponic gardening system and a little raised bed thing that I was testing the two to see which I could grow more <laughs> stuff. Like I got into this, like I yeah. got into it. You're all, into like, it. so the, the thing, the, the thing about you is like <laughs> you, you decide you want to do something and I, you just go all I in. Go. Yeah. And that's, that's good. If something sticks eventually, yeah. I don't think you can do that forever. Unless you're like Elon Musk where you just have like, billions of dollars if you if right. you if you lost three if that guy loses three billion dollars he's like ah oh, i'll recover yeah that, that's all right no when yeah, you lose all your worth sh- it we learned a lesson right here. We le- if you learn fucking <laughs> if you learn too many lessons yeah. and you don't have yeah. that money mm-hmm. yeah we learned we learned we learned a big one so we we ended up on on a wheat farm i i found a property that had been abandoned and i ended up talking to the owner and the the owner was like, yeah, we'd love to have you there and, and kind of take care of it. So I, I worked out this great deal with, mm-hmm. with this guy and we were on, it was parceled out. It wasn't like owned by the same guy, but essentially we were on a 10,000 acre wheat farm mm-hmm. and, and like 2000 of it was farmed by my friend Ryan, who would come over with his, his tractors and we'd get to ride on combines and all kinds of fucking cool, big farm shit. Mm-hmm. But what we did is we had, we had 30 chickens and, and I had, and for the first year, that's all we had. We're going in the egg business, going, baby. Dude, buckle up. Yeah. Buckle up. <laughs> so 30, after I figured out, after I figured out the, the numbers of how much feed they consume and how many eggs they produce. And we, we went through one winter, 30 birds turned into 300, 300. I started getting like into a grocery and then we, we, so we had like three groceries and then I started to really understand the numbers behind the egg business. Mm -hmm. And I was like, dude, there's actually like really good money in, in selling this. If I can get the places to, that's the, the, dude, that's the tricky part is like when you, when people think that like there's, there's good money in everything, yes, but it's like a very small percentage of people accomplish it. There's a lot of things that can go wrong. And like, and I learned, yeah, (laughs) but like, and you know, there's, there's, um, there's a lot of things like, dude, that's, that's just, that's just the thinking you, you, yeah. you like look at the numbers and like for us, you know, it's like, Oh, we can make a lot of, a lot of money doing this. Uh, shit time out. Do we want to, is right. that realistic? Right. What are the odds? What do we if need? If we don't, are we going to be okay? Yeah. What's you our, know? what's our yeah. upfront equipment expense? Like, what do yeah. we need? And so, so I did, I did all those kind of assessments and then we got to the point where, where I, I went to, so I went through a program called arm to farm. Um, and it's, it's for veterans. Mm-hmm. If you're interested in farming, um, definitely look up arm to farm program. Are they still active? They're and, totally still yeah, active. It's okay. a government program and they put on a school once a year, um, usually in a different state. And it's a, it's a one week. They pay for you to go out there. You stay in a hotel, you go to all these classes and they teach you how to set up a farm, hmm. um, where there's grant money, how to get loans, Um, you do a lot of farm tours so you can see how other people kind of run their operations and what types of different operations there are. Like Mm -hmm. I learned a whole bunch about the cattle industry and, uh, market gardening and and stuff like that. But, um, I kind of at that, during that class, like I, I wrote a business plan in like four hours. Like it just clicked. I was Mm -hmm. just like, dude, I'm trying to do vegetables. I'm trying to do pigs. I'm trying to do all this stuff. Fuck all that. I'm scaling back all those things. And I'm only doing eggs, doing chickens, I'm doing chickens. Doing I'm chickens. going all in on fucking chickens. Mm-hmm. And so we bought, um, came back, got, you know, the tractors we needed and the, the hoop houses that we needed. Cause this was going to be a pasture based, uh, farming system where we move the house and the eggs and the chickens are all on, um, you know, open grass and eating bugs and you eat pasture raised eggs. Yeah. I've seen them in your fridge. Yeah, like that's the, I, the, I will only eat that. They're yeah. <laughs> like, as they are as close to what a wild chicken would yeah. produce for you. And the mm-hmm. eggs are fucking delicious. They're expensive as fuck. They but are like I, my, my mother-in-law makes fun of yeah. me, but she, she'll buy, she'll buy 18 eggs for 79 cents. And I'm just yeah. like, I don't trust that fucking egg. No, I don't trust that fucking egg. And I right. bet you that there's something better in my egg. It's totally. like, so mine are seven 99 a dozen. Yes. But I, there's, it, it only makes sense that there's better shit. Yep. They are. Know, like the birds, the like, birds are just raised better and they're, they're eating the way yeah. they are. They're happier animals. They're mm-hmm. there. And that makes good food. Mm-hmm. The food is just better. Yeah. So we did that. And, and, and 
at the Arm to Farm program, the very last speech someone gave me, and this is kind of one of like, we had speakers coming in. The, the my takeaway from this whole thing was this was a it was a, a wheat farmer, but they were doing they were doing their contracts in a very interesting way. That because I knew Ryan who farmed my farm, and I'm constantly asking questions about how stuff works. I knew I know how how the wheat industry works, like how they farm and how the money works. Um, they were doing something completely different with like how they contracted out for three years. Their shit was already sold at a pre-negotiated price before they even planted anything. Like it was, I'd never heard of this. Yeah, okay. So she's talking about, I, I, I kept asking her questions, how she sets this up. And she's like, I go to once a year, we go to an organic food expo. And she's like, and if you ever want to know what it feels to be like a rock star, be a farmer and go to an organic food expo because all the people who are at these expos are selling or they, they want to meet organic yeah. farmers. Like okay. you're the person they're trying to find. Yeah. So that was my takeaway. And yeah. when I came back to my house, I started cold calling uh, grocery stores and I got our eggs into PCC natural markets, which is like a regional mm-hmm. um, uh, whole foods up in Washington and started selling my eggs to them. So, because I landed that, we went from 300 birds to 3,000 birds. Yeah. And that's where I got into trouble is yeah. I scaled too fast. And I had made one big change in that scale where when I made the jump in the amount of birds, I went to a cheaper feed. And the feed was 1% less protein than what the feed I was using was. And that made my 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 chickens like slowly start to to lay less eggs. I'm still feeding 3000 birds, but now I'm getting like 50% lay rate, yeah. which was catastrophic. Yeah. And at the end of it, it, we got to a point where we were like, we're going to have to take on a loan to keep going down this road yeah. or and we, you'd already borrowed some money to start the farm. Right. Or it, um, no, it was all the money all, we had saved. Oh, that's good. So it was a hundred percent. Do our we want to fucking, yep. yeah. Do we want to start farming on a debt based system yeah. or do we want to own a business where we completely have funded ourselves and yeah. we didn't want to, we didn't want to start taking loans. Yeah. So we called it, we sold everything right before winter hit. Um, got rid of the track or after winter. So got down to like 500 chickens and then, and then right before the storms really started showing up on our farm, I sold the rest of them. Um, spring came, we sold all the farm equipment and then we moved down here to Las Vegas where my dad has a couple properties. What year did you move here? Uh, 2018 or yeah. was it 2019? If I'm, it must be. It's 2018. Yeah. Okay. Cause I think I was here like maybe six or seven months before okay, we met. Yeah. But, um, Okay, so you tried farming. Tried farming, and you like just, you you, tr- yeah, you kind of understand the business and I know it now. That. Yeah, but, but it's hard yeah, work. It was, yeah. Oh fuck yeah, dude. It's hard fuck work, yeah. dude. I used to um, I used to be uh, I'm pretty averse to hard work, like manual labor now, yeah. building things. But yep, only because I'm missing a fucking leg. Like, right. I do what I do, and and like uh, it's funny. Like working out isn't actually all that difficult. Like. Walking is difficult. Yeah, and bending just over, standing, you know, and it's and it's a different. Yeah, it's weird. It's different. I couldn't do it. I or I could do it if I had two legs for sure. Right. But I'd like to be out. Yeah, I was a lot different back. Totally. My yeah. my back is what kind of it got. It, I was like, <laughs> look, I got. But you raised some farm hands, you know. But you're had, uh, quite a quite a few years away from uh, the, yeah, the kids. Like the that was the other stuff. thing. Is yeah. it was it was a hundred percent me because Talia, we had all our kids on the farm. Yeah. Um, four of them. Yeah. Back to back to back. They're all yeah. they're all a year apart. Yeah. And so we we were totally looking at that. Like, dude, mm-hmm. they're eight years away from being helpful at yeah. all. Declan mm-hmm. would kind of help out. My oldest, who's who was like five. Well, like a little bit more harm than help, even when he yeah. thinks he's it's helping. Like, yeah. He's helping, but it makes yeah. it make it take like three yeah. times longer. <laughs> so yeah. so yeah, so we we kinda we decided to to come down here and, mm-hmm. and kind of reevaluate what uh what was next. Yeah. And so that's when, that's when we, we kind of got set up, got, you know, we've been homeschooling our kids. Um, we took a trip down to Texas to go visit my dad. Um, and Black Rifle actually had a job position because. Because your dad's in Bernie my and dad's Black in Bernie. Rifle's in Bernie. And Black so Rifle's in Bernie. That's the connection there. That's yeah. the connection. So I started looking around San Antonio, like what kind of jobs are there? 
and they had a job for an assistant editor position, which was essentially would have been like all the footage that we shoot. Mm -hmm. The job was to go back and organize that. So it's like, super searchable yeah it's a shit job now that i know what the Mm -hmm. job actually is it's fucking horrible yeah like i would never want to do this job but at the time i didn't know and i was like i could do that yeah and so i i looked at what the the job requirements were wrote the best resume that i could and sent it off never heard back yeah with like the best resume you could like hey name's owen right yeah. Just just got out of the farming business. Just got out of farming. I think. Say I what? Uh, total- what, <laughs> what program should I download to learn this here editing video softwares? Uh, right. You know. Yeah. I I actually had I had some relevant experience, yeah. but it was like I. I used to. Uh, I used to make music on my That's laptop. Right. I, was and, uh, to- yeah. I was a music producer. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I oh. I fluffed the fuck out of that resume yeah. and sent it to him and. And didn't hear back, but hear back, yeah. the the point of that, that what was cool about it is, is it gave me a direction, and yeah. I I came back from that trip to Bernie, and we had we had two vehicles. Um, you've only seen me with the minivan, but I used to have this big Dodge truck. I saw your picture of it in your okay. farm to film video. You yeah, did. yeah. So I I sold that truck to buy my camera gear. Yeah. Um, and I started making videos of my kids Yeah, and I'd take them to the bike parks and we'd make, I'd, I'd practice different transitions and, mm-hmm. you know, editing colors and piecing stuff together and it got boring as fuck. Yeah. Like I love my kids and I love yeah. taking videos of them, but doing the same trip to the bike park over and over again, just kind of got, mm-hmm. got old. So that's when I posted that video on, uh, or not the video, but posted that on yep. drinking bros business yep. saying, Hey, help me taking a poop. Hey, is anybody out there? Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, I mean, it's I, funny how it worked out, and not to like talk big of me or something like that, but for me to see that and us to be in the same place, totally. And that's it. Was just kind of works out yep. weird like that, you know? And, yeah, seren- and, isn't that serendipity? Yeah, yeah. What I, you know, dude, like what I think I um, really relate to you in that, and and I respect you for it is like when when it when so like this, your farm, the farm failed, right? But it, you don't just like accept some money-making position somewhere you no. always stop and say like what do i want to do right or you, you you talk about it with your wife it's yeah. like what are we going to do what's next and like not not only what are we going to do what do we want to do what'll be fulfilling right you know but i that's first i can't i don't understand how people approach life with a different point of view from Agreed. that and most people don't so For I real most people don't. That's how right. they have jobs that they fucking hate. I you I, know? I lay back very heavily on the getting stabbed story. Um, like when we talk about how how did it affect my life? Like I think there's a huge amount of gravity that that experience has on my how short life can be. Don't waste your time doing something you don't like to do, and getting blown up. Like those were two gigantic you almost fucking died moments. And I'm like, God, man, you could just, you get hit by a truck, you know, walking across the street. Why would I want to waste any minutes not doing something that, you know, brings me some sort of joy or, yeah. you know, I mean, there's, there's tough stuff with everything, but sure. yeah. you know, but no, like, yeah, no, I, I don't, I don't know if, um, I've been this way as long as I can remember. I think I have. And like, so there's, there's pros and cons. Yep. And you have to learn to, uh, uh, control it, you know, but it seems like everybody has that voice in them. It's just been conditioned to shut the fuck up. Yeah. Or, 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 or like our path, our chosen. So like, this is what we, it's stressful, it's stressful as fuck because it is uncertain and you have to yes. be, you have to be, you, you can't let failure no. crumble you like you 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 have to move forward because you are going to fail totally we're like we're like me and you like still to this day we'll fucking work on something and we're like this is gonna be it this is the big one it's gonna be great tank it doesn't fucking like, work ah well that, that's just how it goes like, yeah let's fucking drive on you and know i look at those as like i and, and i've always done this i think i've always not been afraid of the failure because i've always seen that as like the moment of opportunity to learn how to do the next one. It's like, if it didn't, if that didn't work, then if you did the exact same thing and it didn't work again, well, that's a fucking pattern. So and see, I don't now, even, I like that. That makes sense. And that's good. Um, I'm so dumb. <laughs> I don't even need the positive aspect of it. Oh, I'm just like, like, Oh, I failed. Like, 
Yeah. yeah well, so who cares? Yeah. <laughs> like, right on. But like, if you, if you only, you're like, so, like, so right. I'm, fucking, I'm a fucking human. Totally. I'm a fucking human. It's like, I'm doing my best and yeah. I, and I'm, and I don't know everything. Right. It's, it makes sense that I'll fail. Right. Because that just makes sense. You know, what's you worse know? than like, not, like, you know, what's so worse what? than failing yeah. though is not even trying. Right. Like, no, to, for, yeah, like mm-hmm. not trying. Yeah. So I went back in the army cause I regretted not trying out for special forces. I didn't make it. My hearing was actually like, I couldn't pass a fucking physical or get sure. to selections. Yeah. But I tried. Yeah. And and I and I can go to bed when I'm 65 years old, knowing I did absolutely everything no, I could to try and get so that's to that my point. you know that's you know when you were talking about how your past experiences are kind of like motivate you to be it's for me it's my deathbed right I don't totally wanna, I just don't want to waste my time because yeah. I don't want to be I I don't want to I don't want to be that person that looks back and be like oh, fucking what if fucking, I would have well, done fuck it? I wasted my time but yeah like I think about that and that's oh and when, waste when I, your time yeah yeah when I think about this like why did I spend fucking 20 years on that fucking what and so it or it's like uh and I I I get it from my grandpa and my dad was the same way but Is to it? his fucking um, downfall, you know, it can go wrong. Yeah. If so, it's totally. uh, Frank Sinatra, my way. That's yep. the, that's the song, you know. Totally. It's like, dude, I just like I want to do things my way, and that doesn't mean that I'm gonna be a fucking selfish asshole, right? And not care about people because actually, being a good person and being nice makes me f- uh, feel fulfilled, and so yeah. like that's my way. But I'm, t- you know, like I want to be in control of my life, right? Or I want to do what I, what I what I enjoy, right? I don't understand that. And so when we have people who fucking write us, um, and they like, so we help people with their fitness. Right. Um, one of the things we do and, and the emails, I and don't DMs. understand. Um, I don't understand people that they're, you know, like they're very unhappy. Right. Um, but they're unhappy because of how they're spending their time. They, they, they're exchanging their time for money. Right. And they're not enjoying what they're doing with their time. And it's like, this, this person's like, oh, I, I, you know, I can't work out. Or it's difficult for me to work out because I have this fucking job. Right. And it's not like their meaningful life passion, but they're working twelve to fourteen hour days. And it's and it and it's so they like they're working this job for money, but it has this negative effect on their health and fitness and just their overall life. Yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? What are you doing? Why? Right. Like why? But the thing is, is like somebody has to work these jobs. Because that's how the world works. Totally. And Not I think everybody, but like, and I think there's people who are genuinely happy with the, I know I put in this many hours, I get this much money and that affords me the or, ability to or, do something else. Or that, or that job that we would call silly is like truly their passion. Sure. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the many, many, many people out who, there who it's are not exchanging that. their yeah. time for money, yep. doing something that they don't fully fucking enjoy. Yeah. Um, like I just, that that's, and that's what it comes down to is like valuing, valuing your time more than money. There's eva- a million fucking ways to make money. I value my time more than anything else. Yeah. Like it, cause, cause, cause it is, it is undetermined how much I mm-hmm. get and I can't make more of it. Yeah. Like it, 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 uh, <laughs> some, some people will like think that I'm lazy. Cause like sometimes I'll pay somebody to do something that I can do. Right. But I don't want to. Right. And it's not because I'm lazy. But because I want to spend my time doing something else, yeah. it is not fucking lazy. Yeah. And I'm, you know, uh, my, it's, a, it's a if 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 my time if my money buys me time, right? That's a fucking awesome exchange. It's a great exchange. That's exactly what I want. Yeah, you know, I will do. I will. I will find myself doing a lot of things the first time to figure out how it works, mm-hmm. and then know okay, that's something I don't want to do yeah. my time with, and then pay somebody well, to do that. Who what you know when I read about. Um, who was it? Was it Thomas Edison? Um, one of the uh, quote unquote great inventors in American history. I, I think it was Edison. Like he had some of his inventions, but like he got he got credit for a lot of inventions he didn't. Oh, the have. other and people. So like, but anyways, I think one of his quotes was like, "I don't need to know everything. I just need to know somebody who knows that thing." Right. It was like, oh, so like for like like, can I learn what you do? Right. Yeah. Do, but totally. do I want to? No. no. Do I need to? No. What do I need? I need you. Right. I don't need to. I don't need to know, know how to do this. And like, there's there's like different arguments for that. It's like be proficient in every like no, no. There's right. some times where I don't need like I don't need I don't need to know your job. I need to know what you're. You need to know what you're good at. Yeah. And and then you need to capitalize on mm-hmm. on on where you go. Yeah. It takes some people a long time. It's like I didn't really start 
in it, so I'm 42 now. I don't think it was until I was in my mid 30s to where I really started to see where I fit into like the bigger puzzle, mm-hmm. um, as far as like starting companies and and then and then um, where I was inv- I was involved with a couple startups um, in Seattle, and so kind of seeing where like okay, this is what the CEO does, and be like, man, that job sucks because everything kind of falls down on him, but. I'm definitely really good at supporting the CEO yeah. who's like, Hey, I need all these things done and yeah. I'm a fucking problem solver. So like where I'm not necessarily the best, let's make all the decision guy. I'm the fucking awesome. Hey, let's figure out how to make this, how, yeah. how to accomplish this. Yeah. You know, I actually, and I, I think that's why we get, um, or that, that, that this has worked out. We didn't, totally. we didn't meet to be going to no. business together. We just were going to make some silly are, videos. But we're fucking deep in that shit now. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, but actually I, I worked with a, I worked with a friend, um, for a long time and he couldn't accept that. Yeah. So like what you just, like that's exactly. just as important. It's a, it's a, like th- if this is a machine, yep. you're, I'm, you're a cog. Right. I'm a cog. Totally. <laughs> you know, yep. I'm just a cog in this yep. machine. You just got to know so, where your but, cog but, fits. But it's like, if you can't accept that you're a cog yeah. and like, dude, like every cog is important. Super and important. Like maybe, maybe some are more important than others or right. something like that. But if you really truly see it that way, I don't think you're going to make it in business. It's, you know, <laughs> it's a huge, it's a huge <laughs> advantage to know where you, where, where you fit as far as that cog goes. Seeing because the importance. Cause you can waste so much time trying to be something you're not. Yeah. The yeah. number one guy or the number two guy when yeah. really dude, you're an operator. You're, yeah. you're a fucking number four guy. Yeah. And if you were in that position, you'd be crushing it. Yeah. With mm-hmm. the right team. Yeah. No, I, I remember he said, he said his, uh, his pride couldn't take it. Yeah. And I was like, Oh damn. Yeah. That's just, you know? Yeah. And it, which is interesting because it's not like you're, what you do is, um, like demeaning or yeah right yeah, no. you know this so like yeah super but, fun like, you're definitely a number two yeah but so y'all are right, I like cool. I yeah. love what I do yeah and yeah. I and I and I you know and I've I it's it's awesome because uh I um <laughs> getting to, getting to the point where I'm just you know I just kind of trust you to to do to figure shit out yeah and I'm like don't tell me about it right I don't want to know I don't want to nerd shit know. Owen yeah, like do you want to know every thought that's in my fucking head <laughs> no. you want me to fucking overwhelm you with that because like because no. like, you have your you have your role and I have my right. role you know and so yeah I'm trying to figure out how to sync yeah. these cameras up so, and make the sound right yeah and, and so it's been fun and we and we're both um we're like we're both not afraid to try yeah we just try and we're like we've done a lot in the last year and a half right just because we just we're like we have an idea it's like yeah. how can we make this work how does, we really you what know, do we need to make that work yeah i think i have half the stuff like yeah yeah let's do it and we've really turned this this year into a legitimate what this is that's odd because it's me kind of or like, what is our business? Or it's weird, right? You yeah. know, um, and and then for 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 like five years, everything that I did was just sort of you know casual and things like that. And now we've made this a legitimate business where yeah. it's like, oh fuck, it has to be taken seriously. It totally has to be taken seriously. Ha- yeah. yeah, yeah. We help we help a lot of people out with fitness, and a lot of people get get like like. The, 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 it's, it's super gratifying to read comments, especially like yeah. the reviews of the workout programs and, or, or when yeah. people get questions and then follow up with like emails of like, Hey, thanks for helping me out with this. Or me and you spend a lot of time figuring out how we can better support. It's like, totally. can we do this tutorial video? Yep. Okay. Where can we put it? Is it in this right. group? Is it on this page? How about on YouTube? Cause it's easily searchable. Do yeah. we start including videos in the training programs? And it's all about better because like what what really like we put out like these training programs yeah and we get these common questions yeah and it's like all right we're like that means we're failing what are we exactly somewhere. And what are we like, not yeah. we are we're obviously we're getting the same 10 questions and we're getting good we like we we got like the first month it was the same 10 yep and then it was it was then it was seven yep and then it was five and now yep. we're down to like two or three right and then so we fucking bang that out yep and then we can go above and beyond and then we right. can start like we, we we only always go the extra mile like right. i think we do that like especially with like our pricing on things like that yep. but as as, uh, as far as like the free support yeah, that like you know we just we're 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 working right now to really organize things and yeah. make things easy, make things f- running fluid without too much. Da- so like we can do stuff to better support the people yep. who give us their money and want our help. I'm really excited about the the 
the nutrition part that we're we're working on. I don't yeah. know if you've talked about that too much, mm-hmm. but no, nope. we've got uh, we've got we've nope. got some exciting shit yeah. coming up that I yeah. think people are really gonna get different. a lot of yeah, super, super different, super, super different. different. Yeah, they're gonna get a lot but of that's, value. That's and, something I uh, just you know just real you know we we help people with their training. We have training programs on DerekWhite.com. Yep. You know, basically, as far as like um, helping people with the mental aspects and stuff, that's just kind of like the content we put out yep. when we put it out, you know, or we, and we have the wider group yep. on Facebook and that's that there's, um, uh, there's a lot of information put out there, but like I've never directly sk- ha- had something to offer people where it's like, here's your help with food, right? Here's help with food. And so, like, yeah, we got this. Um, I've been working on a new, different kind of thing. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be cool, man. It's gonna be awesome. I'm excited about it. And that's just, you know, we just sit here and come up with ideas and like, hey, you want to try this? How do, how can we do it? Yeah. And like, oh, okay. I, th- I think we could shit, do that. We can do that. Oh, I think this will help a lot of fucking people, man. Yep. Oh shit, very cool. All right, yeah. So that's actually, uh, maybe by the time this uh, podcast is released, we'll that be, be that finalizing should be coming that. Close. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, um, I think that'll uh, wrap up. Uh, that's a that's me in a that's, nutshell. That's Owen. So yeah, just to, your takeaways today. Owen has been beat with a wrench, stabbed, <laughs> and blown up. He's sold motorcycles, houses. Um, been a chicken farmer. Chicken farmer. He's in the army. Yep. He also got a bunch of kids. Yeah, married to married, Leah. Awesome. Nineteen years. Four kids. At one point, there were one, two, three, and four. Yeah. Now they're. I met him while I was pooping. That's right. And uh, we've been working together for eighteen months, and he's. Uh, you're part of, uh, part of you're group. just as part you're, you're just as much a part of this podcast as i am yeah so uh and uh almost almost a co-host it was about almost <laughs> <laughs> that's the official title i even if you said you're the co-host i am going to leave I've almost because i think it's almost, hilarious uh, yeah assistant almost. to the regional manager <laughs> assistant to the regional manager <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's one of my favorite Almost episodes. Co-host. That's what we're gonna put. I'm gonna put that. I'm gonna fucking make a banner for right above your head. Almost right there. the co-host. Almost the co-host. <laughs> assistant to the host. Assistant, your assistant to the host. <laughs> yeah. Uh, someday, man. Oh, that's cool. Someday, I gotta have goals to yeah, work towards. Yeah, you know, right? Uh, uh, in in this company, there's always a uh, room for upward uh, growth. I, but I love that. It doesn't happen that. overnight. Good. Right? Yeah. And uh, don't ever feel too safe and secure in your position. All right. So, so no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Nah. Yeah. That was. Um, I'm glad we got to uh, 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 spend some time and 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 let people know who you are a little yeah. bit because they listen to you and things like that who the too. Fuck he's is a, that guy? Yeah. He's not just. Uh, yeah. You're a 42 year old man who's who's been some places and seen some things. So yeah. Uh, moving forward, we got uh, we got some fun guests lined up. I can't wait. Um, for the for the show now yeah. that people are kind of starting to travel, I think we'll start mm-hmm. to be able to get people yeah, here to Vegas start spending and spending those fucking ad dollars. So yes. like, so we have um, uh, uh, you know, when we do ad reads on this show, we Owen and I have committed to using that money to fly in guests because yep. we want to do everything in person and have you know quality interaction and quality uh, quality uh, video and audio and things are starting to open again. So yeah, yeah, cool. Um, but that's gonna wrap it up. I gotta pee again. Still not bad. Two in two and a half hours. Yeah, Yeah. that's all right. Um, Thanks for joining us, everybody. Thanks, Owen, for being here every fucking week with a smile on your face. That's it. Um, Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Uh, We'll catch you next week. Love you guys. Bye.